What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Smoking Tire Podcast. This episode is brought to you by our new partner, Off the Record. Listen, guys, I've been pulled over more times than I can count. And if there is one thing I've learned, it's that you should always, always, always fight your tickets. And if you've got a professional to help you, that's even better because it's not just about, oh, I got a speeding ticket and it's $200. That goes on your insurance more times than not. And it, 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 exponentially costs you more money over the next several years. If you have nice cars and if you have multiple cars, that cost is multiplied and a speeding ticket could be in the thousands of dollars. That's why I want to welcome our new partner, Off the Record. Off the Record helps you find a qualified attorney in the state you got your ticket in or the state you live in, and they will fight that ticket on your behalf. They have a success rate over 90%, and if they don't get the ticket off your record, you don't pay them. That's the guarantee, folks. There's two ways to do it, okay? You can either go to their website. And it's our specific website. So you go to the link in the description of this episode or it's fight.offtherecord.com slash TST. I know that's tricky to remember. So fight.offtherecord.com slash TST or you can download the Off The Record app and use code TST10. Now, either of those codes, either of those methods gives you 10% off any services you get from Off The Record from now until May of 2023. So you download the app, you bank the code now, and then it's there when you need it because you you don't want to be on the side of the road with lights flashing in your mirror and decide that that is the time to find an attorney. You want to have Off The Record ready for you. That way, if you get pulled over and you think you have, you can fight this case, they are there for you. Remember, guys, always fight your tickets. Fight.offtherecord.com slash TST or code TST10 on the Off The Record app. We are also brought to you by Dylan Optics Sunglasses. You know those awesome matte finish sunglasses that I'm wearing in every car review video? They come in all kinds of different frames. They come in all kinds of different colors. And the anti-reflective NIR lens technology doesn't just look cool on camera. It really helps in bright light. It cuts down the glare. The polarization is great. It's like HD life, really. Um, The clarity is just incredible. You've got the plastic... You know, surfer style, you've got the wire frame, more aviator style, they're large frames, small frames, and you can get the lenses in about five or six different colors. If you go to the smokingtire.com and click on the partners page, see that Dylan Optics link. If you use that and you buy a pair of sunglasses, I will send you a free smoking tire t-shirt for supporting the people who support the show. So go to the smokingtire.com, click on the Dylan banner, and I will give you a free smoking tire t-shirt if you buy a pair of Dylan's using that link. All right, folks, on this episode of the Smoke Tire Podcast, Johnny Lieberman is back in the game. I'm going to be honest, this dude's been begging me for like months to come back on the show. No, I'm just kidding. He's quarantined with his wife and kid. He's going crazy, and he's got a bottle of high-proof bourbon. It's Johnny Lieberman on the Smoke Tire Podcast. What up, fuckers? Smoke Tire Podcast in the his house, Johnny Lieberman at his his house. <laughs> Not at ours. No. Johnny, Zach, give him the shot, brother. The fuck, the hockey There's game. Johnny. Oh, he got distracted, yeah. but he got distracted. Johnny's got the outdoor vibe happening. Uh, what you pouring, Beautiful brother? Day. What's that? What are you pouring right now? I am drinking. Well, I'm pouring out of a decanter. But um, So every time I come on your podcast, I get 70,000 Instagram messages saying, what's the best bourbon for less than 50 bucks? And mm. I always tell them there isn't any. But um, for like sixty bucks, you can get Old Forester, um, nineteen twenty Prohibition uh, whiskey or something like that, and that's this, and it's it's awesome. It's the it's the best under a hundred dollar. Pretty much, I'm not the best. It's one of the ten best under a hundred dollar bourbons out there. All right, and it's one hundred and fifteen proof, so it's it's real strength. Oh, there you go. Zach yeah. and I are drinking some E.H. Taylor that I've brought from home. Dude, this is nice. it's very, some of the best bourbon I think I've ever very had. Very nice. Or it's just been a yeah, long e. time. E.H. Taylor, I heard you talking about Blanton. So um, uh, Blanton's, E.H. Taylor, they're all from uh, Buffalo Trace. So mm-hmm. all Frankfort, Kentucky. Um, 
they 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 age next to each other in the same rick houses yeah are so, they there's wow. buffalo trace only has like two mashes and then a couple different aging lengths so i'm not sure how they end up with eh taylor exactly but it's probably not far off of how you end up with plantains exactly yeah different different woods because all like you know i don't know it depends who you ask but most of the flavor in bourbon uh comes from the wood so different trees based on what they soak up through their roots they express different flavors wow um and so the stuff that tastes like blanton's becomes blanton's and the wood <laughs> that tastes like e.h taylor becomes e.h taylor yeah the other stuff becomes pappies the other stuff becomes stag so it's pretty yeah. neat I, you know, speaking of bottles under there are affordable bottles of bourbon, there's a bottle that I like and now my pilot is not as refined as yours, but it's uh, by Taconic Distillery. It's just called Straight Bourbon Whiskey. It's from New York. I don't know if you can get it everywhere, but I happen to think it's very drinkable and uh, delicious. And I think the last time I saw it, it was $55 a bottle. I have some in my house. It's okay. the one on the left in this picture. But they okay. make other stuff too. It's got the hunting dog on the label, but it's it it's best with a rock. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I have I, I I I go through that stuff a lot because it's not like you know special in the sense that you need to to save it. You can just fucking drink the shit. It's good. Let me let let me ask you two questions. How old is it, and what proof is it? It is eighty proof. Oh, I, okay. belie I believe. Yeah. Right? Can you can you yeah. tell me, Zach? I think it's 80 proof. Um, Doesn't say on there. Yeah, uh, it's not barrel. Oh, proof. sorry, 90 proof. 90 proof. Sorry, it's 90 okay. proof. Uh, that's good. That's good. And I that's like kind of the 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 minimum. If you go below that, you get into like Maker's Mark, Jim Beam, uh, Jack Daniels territory. Right. Where, like it's easy to make something taste good if it's mostly water, <laughs> <laughs> water and sugar. It's yeah, a good point. Um, uh, so yeah, I guess it's 90. I th I want to say it's. Five yeah. or ten. It's not some crazy length. It's it's a relatively so, young. I'll, I'll just say this. Um, you know, unlike champagne, where a bourbon comes from really doesn't matter all that much. Um, like some of the very best bourbons are from Indiana, hmm. of all places. It's it's next to Kentucky, mm -hmm. close. Um, it stuff from New York. I think New York uh, bourbon's got a bad rep because there's that Hudson Valley or Hudson. Yeah, Hudson bourbon. Hudson whiskey, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they make, they make those little tiny um, bottles. <laughs> the little really chody bottles. <laughs> just the worst. The, the worst. There's, there's nothing worse. It's all marketing. It's all crap. Um, so I, I've always been turned off when I see New York bourbon. But that that first of all, this place probably doesn't make their own stuff. They probably buy it from Indiana. Probably there's this giant distillery called MGP, and it makes like. If you go into a liquor store and look at a bourbon shelf, 80% of it is from one distillery in Indiana. Oh, really? It's the Luxottica of, yeah. <laughs> of liquor. <laughs> yeah, but they're a tremendous distillery. So it's it, you don't, un unlike Luxottica, you don't hold it against them. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, it's a 12-year uh, MGP rye. That might be one of the best ryes ever made. Oh, interesting. You know? I found yeah, this so place because one of the partners who owns it is a trapper at the Orvis shooting grounds where I go with my dad and shoot skeet and they have bird hunts and stuff up there. And this guy's like one of those super interesting guys who's not just a trapper. He's like a forager and he goes like truffling in Europe and he oh, cool. looks for mushrooms and he does all this like, you know, all this woodsy shit. Um, and he was, yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, it was... Uh, it was a particularly tasty beverage. So we had it at my wedding. We got multiple cases of it. Oh, nice. Uh, and we're serving well, it at the wedding. Uh, good. I will I will try and find some. If uh, next time I can see you in person in this studio yeah. or our new studio, right. I will bring I'll bring that and we can drink that together. Nice. Uh, okay. So what's happening in I, I your like uh, in your car world, buddy? I saw your on your gram, your fucking garage or your driveway is pretty stacked up right now. Uh, well, first of all, I'm just going insane. Like the, I, I, <laughs> I, 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 I was telling Zach, I have a three-year-old, so I think people without kids, like everyone I talk to, is like, "Oh, dude, I'm learning Japanese and and shoe repair and uh, you know, like uh, knife sharpening. I've gotten really good at that. I'm like, oh, you're Daniel Day Lewis. <laughs> I, I watch Monsters University four times a week. Um, <laughs> I, I know all the songs to a show called Stinky and Dirty. Um, I'm I'm suffering. It's just it's it's 
I, I, I'm fucked. I'm just totally fucked. I think I think my brain is starting to rot, and not not from this stuff, just from like no sleep. Yeah, and watching cartoons. <laughs> I'm just going, I'm losing it. Cars. Uh, okay, I just I just uh, we're doing this PR stunt uh, for lack of a better term, but it's actually a really cool thing. So you know Ford, um, they're manufacturing masks and ventilator ventilators and <laughs> PPE gear. Yes, so but you can't call them venerators. Drop- that's that's definitely racist. What did I say? <laughs> Never mind. Let's just okay. not pretend I didn't make that joke. Okay. I think if I let it go, go, it wouldn't have been racist. By making the joke, calling something racist, the joke became racist, I think. <laughs> I understand. I understand. So so Ford is delivering yeah. um, 3,500 masks to the Motor Trend office tomorrow, and we're going to deliver 3, them. 3,500? Yep. Oh wow! And we're and we're going to deliver them to the Shriners Children's Hospital in Pasadena, and be, because I'm the only person on staff who owns a Ford, I got drafted. Um, <laughs> so we're going to put a bunch of masks into the Focus and a bunch of other vehicles. Uh, there it is. So um, my car sadly lives outside because I have a one car garage that's stuffed with shit, and when it is emptied out, it'll have a 914 Porsche in it. Mm. So. It was filthy, so I just had to hand wash a car. And um, unlike a lot of people on the internet, I fucking hate washing cars. It's just the worst. Me I too, just, buddy. <laughs> me too. Dude, I do I, too, but I've done it. I've hand washed four uh, cars in the last week in front of my house. Just, yeah, it's just. It's, it's, I need I, a thing to do. Because <laughs> you don't have a kid. I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I I did. I just did the Porsche before I came here. Thirty two minutes. Yeah. Fucking yeah. from hose on to car dry, yeah. thirty two minutes. Not bad. Yeah. C- ceramic helps no. a lot, right? Ceramic yeah. helps I mean, a lot. Luckily the, the fiesta is about this big, so yeah. you can like it, it's literally like comes up to like here on me, so yeah. I can like wash the roof real easy. And do you um, fuck with the absorber? Those are my those are my super jam. Do you know what I'm talking about? They're like synthetic I chamois. I have the the double XL absorber that is a forty eight by forty eight. Bro, and you just like, thump, you throw it like a sheet and then just drag it back. And on the Fiesta with all those flat panels, you could dry that thing in like nine seconds. I I, I did. I have a smaller one. So uh, Adam's Polishes sent me like a care kit. Mm-hmm. So I, I use, uh, they, there was like two of those big, it's like a lamb skin or lamb wool. Yeah. The yeah. That's the proper thing. chamois, the natural chamois thing. Yeah. 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 yeah so yeah. I use that. Yeah. Um, but anyways, yeah, so Fiesta's clean, but it'll just get dirty again. And I have my All Road, which has a fucking cracked windscreen, I just noticed, and it's oh, like a giant crack, so it's totally done. Um, then we got the long-term Mercedes-Benz GLE 450 that bounces. Um, oh, yeah, the hoppy one. Yeah, yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Zach, if you're going through my Instagram, look for it. There's a, there's a great video of the thing just bouncing. Um, I look like a Zapatista. I'm wearing like a like a orange uh, bandana mask, and then I got the Porsche 911 Turbo S Cabriolet. And like you, I got a ticket. Did you get a ticket? <laughs> Malibu, Malibu is so fucked right now. I was like coasting. Yeah, there it is. That's yeah. it. That was it. It's I was awesome. Coasting. You can just buy a, ri- a low rider. Sixty-four and a fifty. Oh. And wow. I was like, officer, I could be doing 190. Like, <laughs> I, am, I am coasting. He's like, yeah, you know, like, but you the speed limit's 50. I was like, oh, oh yeah. I have a, we have a new partnership with a thing called Off the Record that helps uh, people find uh, ticket lawyers. We'll hook you up. Okay, cool. I'm pretty good. I have my little way. I'm not going to announce it, but I have my way of fighting tickets. And okay, uh, yeah, I'm 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 pretty good. I want to make sure it works a few more times. Before I it. <laughs> All right, cool. If you don't, if you if it doesn't work out, we're here for you. But like, I haven't got a speeding ticket. I got a ticket maybe six years ago. That was my last ticket, yeah. and that was like it was a bullshit. This guy by my office claimed I ran a stop sign, fought it, won. I haven't had a speeding ticket because I know all the CHP. Yeah. So they're always like, oh, hey, we worked on that video together. I'm like, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I like the kids. You and I know like the rules of speeding around LA County, the where's and when's and when not to's. But the 911 Turbo S, all you had to do is it's just that a little bit of throttle and then you're going 140 fucking miles an hour dude i, I so, <laughs> so crazy even, i've driven now the coupe and the convertible the convertible is even freakier because i think it's literally just as quick i don't think there's any penalty and um 
I hopped on the freeway. I live next to the two freeway, and it's like a you know four or five lane freeway. That's a really dangerous freeway to live next to. Everyone's home. (laughs) Yeah, and I just with the top down, I floored it, and like the only thought in my head was like, this is what the the Veyron Grand Sport felt like. (laughs) (laughs) And then and then just like the Veyron, I was going 140 miles an hour. Yeah, going what the fuck is happening? Yeah, and um, (laughs) because it's. Like even this, like like the seven twenty S, which we I think we agree is like bonkers fast. Mm-hmm. It still there's like a grip and a lag that you know you floor it and it's not immediate, immediate, immediate. Whereas the this Turbo S, because of the all wheel drive, and they figured out how to make overboost permanent, and it's just PDK is PDK. It's just so instant. And then like a Veyron, most cars you know you floor them and like pay attention to this next time you floor a car and it like. It goes up and down. It goes left to right. It does all kinds of stuff. Then it goes straight. Whereas like the Veyron is like just on, it's on a train track. It just goes straight forward. And that's how this thing is. And it's like the same quality as a Veyron. It's crazy. The car is crazy quick. Do you, do they, do you think they have like Porsche has gotten so good with um, like their throttle sensitivity and computers and boosts and everything like almost ha- almost where they can predict what you're about to do like as you dip into the gas they go i think you are going to go this fast and well this that's fast. what and that sport all this turns response up real quick. mode thing is about in theory in theory the yeah. sport response mode you hit the button and then it's like bonsai mode right and you get that for 20 seconds but is that it's almost like is that on in the background all the time because they're so good at just like so at turning all the they, switches johnny up quickly. probably knows yeah, yeah honestly. well they, they have this new feature I, for the life of me i can't remember the name but it uses gps data to um uh predict what's going to happen for the next 1.8 miles i guess that's three kilometers or something so it actually looks at real-time traffic data so like if you floor it and there's traffic ahead, you probably won't get full power if this system's engaged. But if you have a wide open freeway on a, you know, Monday afternoon during coronavirus, like full fucking power. I don't know. I don't know. It's so Whoa. bloody quick. It was because I remember, Matt, you were telling me, you're like, yeah, I was doing 110 before I knew it. You know, I and, allegedly, <laughs> yeah, 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 allegedly, 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 close course, I close made course. it. The car was delivered to my house, and I made it 5.2 miles before being threatened with impound and arrest. <laughs> and the freeway is 4.8 miles from the fucking house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you you did it. You did like just over a quarter mile and got. <laughs> Bro, I just I just made a right onto an on ramp. And I went, well, there's no, I can see, I can physically see there's nobody there, hammer down for f- three to four seconds, and and then just coast it out, just straight coast yeah. it out, nothing happens. And then like three minutes later, <laughs> an F-350 fucking super aggro is on my ass. And it's like, not just pull over, it's exit the freeway and put the uh, keys on the roof. Exit, that was what I got. the freeway, sure. Yeah, exit yeah. Freeway. They said they called in air support. It was, you've never seen two cops wow. so fucking pissed and confused at the same time. Well, I will. I will say, like, not not surprised at all. And uh, like, uh, stay out of Malibu. Just stay the fuck out of Malibu. <laughs> it is. It is hell. Yeah. I, I actually, um, I got pulled over twice. A different car uh, on Sunday. Luckily, there was a bunch of cops in this little group I was running around with, and so they let us go. But like, Malibu's just hell. It's just it's until this virus thing passes, like. Don't drive there. They will. They will just pull you over. It's. I. There's. I've never seen more police on. It's crazy. The freeways and in it's Malibu crazy. and in. Yeah. It's not. Uh. You. The place though. Honestly, Johnny. Early morning. The place that you and I like to go yeah. in the forest is. Yeah. Yeah. Is has been. Is never been better. Frankly, it's never been better. I. I you know our, our mutual friend uh, uh, Misha the rock star. Oh yeah. Um. Yeah, He's I coming on the show in two a. weeks. Misha Mansoor from the band Periphery. He will be on the Smoking Tire podcast, I believe, in two weeks. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Oh, you and Misha. He's a, he's, yo, he's a super cool guy, but I like, I went out with him a few weeks ago, and he, he was like, oh, let's do like 3 p.m., and I'm like, kind of a shit show, but okay. He's new in like, town. He doesn't really understand how it works. He's only been here for a little while. And then I was like, hey, we're going to get up at 7. He's like, bro, I'm a rock star. Like, I go to bed <laughs> at 6. I'm like, you're getting up at 7. If you want to go with me, it's 7 a.m. Yeah. We saw, we saw like two cars. Yeah. 
I mean, it's the best. It's the same shit. I went to Tale of the Dragon, and people keep talking about Tale of the Dragon, how that shit's so crowded and whatever. I'm like, I did what I always do. I get up at 5.30, and <laughs> there was nobody there. Like, it was amazing. I did run after run on yeah. Tale of the Dragon. I think I did three clean runs without seeing a car. It was like, awesome. Yeah. No, I mean, the first time I went there, we, we left before dawn. Yeah. And, like, at, as we're, like, two miles up, the sun's coming up. We got to the top, and it was, like, the most beautiful sunrise I've ever seen. And we didn't see another car till about nine, and then like it was mostly motorcycles. Yeah, but that's how you do it. Yeah, it was it was fucking great. I mean, if you're if you're just willing to get up early, this is the world is your oyster, dude. It's the same shit at the Nurburgring on public days. Like mm -hmm. everyone's like, oh my god, Fridays and Saturdays are hell. It's like mm, if you get there when it opens, you get about two hours of nobody on the track. Yeah, and then like by by eleven, you can you can go away because you've done you know nine laps. It, your tires are done. Your car's done. Yeah. So. But you know, did you? I know that uh, your your experience uh, with Turbo S is a little different from mine. Especially, I I think mine got a little dampened. A by the fact that I only had one day and it rained a little bit, and B yeah. um, by the fact that I got yoinked and fucking screamed at. But I really do believe that that in eighty five to ninety percent of circumstances, there's fundamentally no difference between a Carrera S and a Turbo S and how they how they behave. Sure, I agree with that, except here's what I would say is, um, you know, it's that 10 to 15% of the time that you're hammering your car, right? That That's why you spend the extra money to get something with that much power and that much performance. I, I've, like you, I've driven a lot of fast cars and a lot of good roads. Um, I can't even come up with a car that's similar to how this thing went up Angeles Crest. Um, it was like a hill climb special it had it had as much grip as like the GT3 RS, um, but it was like it had the power of the GT2 RS. You know what I mean? Like it was, it had more and it had more grip than than the GT2 because of the you know it was all wheel drive. It was just bonkers. I was I was so impressed. Um, I'm gonna have to bug Frank climb. when it's in the middle of the summer and be like, listen, I need a, I need a secret little summer day because because <laughs> yeah. I mean in the in in a in a, in a day on a damp road and even when I'm talking about Lake Hughes Road, which is a big fast open road, big and road, it wasn't yeah. all damp. Some of it was damp. I, I I my my pace was limited by as fast as I could think. <laughs> you know, and 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 the grip of a tire on a on a somewhat unpredictable damp road, and and yeah. it just wasn't. You know, I, I I've been I've been in some bonsai shit, just like like Johnny yeah, has, yeah, and yeah. I know what bonsai is. And this car is fucking bonsai, but yeah, but 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 what I meant is f the 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 sensations that it gives you are are not. Uh, are, are are really available for a lot less money. You know what I mean? The numbers just go up way fucking faster. <laughs> you know I, would, I, mean? I would say I would say no, um, but only in one in one instance. And it's if you're really it was uphill. It was much more noticeable than than anywhere else. But I was just climbing that hill. Like remember when the GTR first came out and there was just nothing that could carry speed around corners like a gtr could You're yeah just like, oh i can't think this fast like you just said um it was like that but then quicker because it's like 10 years newer um i i was i was blown away i was just like because you know the turbo it's always been super quick it's always been very luxurious and it's, it's always had capability but then it just it just didn't have any feel you know it was like yeah it's 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 very capable but this thing felt good it felt like like just like a great i don't know I, I keep coming back to hill climb car but it just, it just felt so good and um I, I was i was not expecting that you know and it's just one of those like how does porsche keep doing it type moments but that it, was the, like, how does the how do they keep doing it is how i felt when after a day in tycon turbo s and i was like oh fuck me this is really some other shit isn't it like, mm, okay my brain hurts now and my eyeballs have been in the back of my head for 30 minutes yeah, I, I haven't I haven't driven the S. I drove the Taycan Turbo, but it's like, 
this is their first electric car. It's yeah. like better than 98.7% of all cars ever made. <laughs> <And that's> just, <laughs> just out the gate. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I yeah, haven't tried the regular turbo. I assume the difference is incremental, but it was just some fucking bonsai shit. I mean, where you go, I, I can't believe people can buy this. It's just money. All they need to do is show up with money and you can just that, have this. That, like what? That, that's how, that's how I felt about the, the, the turbo S is the, the, the coupe and, I'm telling you, the convertible. Okay, maybe I should get the convertible when Johnny's fucking done, fucking stinking it up. Yes, yes. Well, <laughs> apparently Spike is going for it, but of course um, he is. So, I'll so take Devereaux, Spike's you know, sloppy you know, Pat seconds. Devereux? Yeah. Um, so Devereaux owns a GT3 with a manual, right? Good choice. Uh, yeah, it's a good and choice. And he calls me after driving this this white uh, Cabriolet, and he's like, "Yeah, that's the perfect car. That's 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 it's better than the coupe." It, the convertible is literally, it's the only car you'll ever need. It does everything. And I was like, Pat's lost his mind. And then I've been driving it around and it's like, when it's in normal mode, it's, it's just as luxurious as anything. And then you put it in sport and it's a sports car. And then you put it in sport plus and manual uh, shifting. And it's, it's a hyper car. It's fucking crazy. Actually, my only real gripe about it. Uh, same as with the Carrera S uh, and 4S is that if you leave it in normal and automatic mode, it, that eco mode, the engine gets a little droney and it, it really keeps it below, like, you know, those flat sixes below yeah, yeah. 2000 is not their optimum smoothness. Like, right, to, right. you know what I mean? And so if you put it in sport, it revs it up just high enough to get it into the smooth and I think like I said in the in my written piece you know Porsche is obligated to give a shit about that one mile per gallon you get for eco mode but you as the owner of the car are not right. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean yeah, yeah, yeah. and totally, it's, your totally. real world miles per gallon is only incrementally worse in sport versus normal in this car but the smoothness of the motor in the in the sport tune is way better and you can still leave the shocks in like soft and yeah. it's all good you know, well, and the other thing it's is the best when you're daily in driver normal, ever, except for Tycon. It's the best daily driver ever. So when you're in that normal mode, remember the car starts in second gear. That's how yeah. you get programmed. So you have no revs, and you're starting in a in a high gear. So just sport mode means you get more revs and first gear to leave a, a light. So yeah, it just it drives better in sport mode. It does. But um, you know the the I mean I can't, I can't. It's been out for seven weeks or whatever. But the original nine nine two. Um, you know, one of the complaints was it had a lot of road noise. So they put all new glass in the first in the turbo. It's going to trickle down to the rest of the 992 line. Um, but now it's like it's even with the top up or in the coupe, it's like it's quiet inside uh, quite enough. And then with the convertible top down, this one doesn't have the sport exhaust. So it sounds like two giant hair dryers. Um, I had the sport exhaust on the red coupe. I think. Did you yeah. drive the red coupe also? I mean, it's yeah, still yeah. it. It's still not that, you know what I mean? It's still not that aggro. It's and, still and your pretty video sedate. is real quiet yeah, in the drive-by. Yeah, it's still pretty, yeah. pretty turbo-y yeah. and wind and vacuum-y. It's, it's like, not. It's like four vacuum cleaners. Yeah, the Panamera, the the Panamera and Mama Green was better with the sport exhaust than the bro, fucking 911. Sounds very good. Yeah, it's a that V8, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. awesome. Oops. Um, but, you know, I, the last 911 cab I drove was 991.2 GTS cab with uh, Camisa up in... Um, Fucking yeah. wherever we Tahoe or Aspen mm -hmm. or some Tahoe. shit. Tahoe, right? And uh, I was shocked at how not jiggly it was. Like like chassis rigidity, shocked. No jiggliness. You put the elbow on the door, you put the hand on the A pillar, yeah. and you drive yeah. over some bumpy shit, no jiggly. It was amazing. No. It doesn't compress your arm or anything. Yeah, right. your That's arm doesn't test. move. It does it, it holds the triangle. I mean, it shouldn't surprise anybody that Porsche does engineering really well, but like the roof, you know, the convertible roof. I can't remember if they had a four man team working on it for eight years or an eight man team working on it for four years, but you <laughs> transitive figure, property of man hours versus convertible top mechanisms. Yeah, I, I think at most car companies, like you get hired as an engineer and you get to design a mirror, then a windshield wiper, <laughs> then a convertible top, then an ashtray. And at Porsche, these are the guys that top is as good as anything else on the car, you know? Yeah. So, it's just it's, it's it's fucking nuts. By the way, get ask for the convertible. They say it takes twelve seconds for the top to go up and down. 
I think it's like nine. It is so are they, quick. Are they sandbagging their convertible yeah, top? Yeah, I think they're sandbagging their roof. Yeah. yeah. If Fucking it's nuts. if it, we should put a 720s spider next to one and and have a top race. Yeah. I bet yeah. Laura Laura will play ball on that. We'll get a 720 spider. Let's do that. That'll be fun. We might, we might be a step ahead on that one, but yeah. Oh, you yeah, fucking yeah. little bitch. Scooped. <laughs> Libra. Scooped. <laughs> Hello, hey, you know, Lieberman. We got, we got a lot of free time over at the Motor Trend Mothership. You Bro, know what if, I'm saying? if you haven't had a go yet, and I don't want to bore the audience, we did 30 minutes on it last show, but you got to get that Battleship Blue Gray Morgan Plus 4 for a few days just to bomb around in it yeah yeah fucking it's so great to go from that turbo s cab you gotta you gotta get out of the turbo s cab and get in the morgan and you drive the same road in a car that was designed 70 fucking years earlier and it really like it's like you know it's like for for your automotive perspective it's like an arresting hook on an aircraft carrier yeah you got it. <laughs> I mean, it's it's so, a palate cleanser. For, yeah, it's what it is. Like, so hey, odd. you're eating bacon. Let's yeah. just calm down. Yeah, it's it's so funny because like uh, Magnus drove it, and like I don't know if he made this public or not, but privately he told me like he fucking hated it. It was just like him and Hannah were like just miserable, and you were like, yeah, Morgan. But I think I'd be like you because like I I had that three wheeler, and I I I love that thing. Yeah. Well, look, just, objectively, it's terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and uh, like it's ter- it's it's a terribly ob- objectively <laughs> bad thing. But it's so it's so charming yeah, yeah, that yeah. Oh, yeah. that you have to love it and people's reaction to it is so amazing and it's just it's a I think it was a really fun thing. I understand why somebody would drive it and say it's a piece of shit. I totally get that. It I wasn't really even do. that it was a piece of shit. They just hated the experience. You know, they were just like uncomfortable. Magnus, Magnus is like your height. He said he didn't fit. That's true. Um, he's fucking no. He's taller than me. I'm six three. Tall. He's probably and, six five, and he wears the fucking boots. I, I was gonna say he ain't taking those boots off. <laughs> That's <from> nobody. <laughs> I had to take my. I had to. I had to go flip flops and barefoot. There's no yeah, way, yeah. Magnus. I don't even yeah. think Magnus has feet. <laughs> <laughs> he's just got boots. <laughs> I think he's. I think he just stopped in his knees and he screws his boots on. <laughs> right, right. And Hannah's, Hannah's the same height, so they I, 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 they just didn't like it. But I get I that. Think I would a like very it. tall like, couple, that makes sense why they wouldn't like it. Yeah, well, they also like, get the vintage I, experience like, from their cars all the time, and so this is like, they're right. like, all right, this is an uncomfortable experience you know, that we get. Yeah. Right. I, th- I think theirs might have broken, and so my... <laughs> oh. My... My Morgan experience, the uh, one, two, three times I've driven a Morgan, it's ended with a flatbed truck. Oh, no. So, yeah. I mean, I, I, I've I've heard these things. Um, yeah, I, it, it's, it's okay. <laughs> they're working on it. They're getting, you know, they're, give another 70 years and they'll totally have it solved. <laughs> they'll, sort it, they'll sort it right out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah. man, I, I, I have to say, I think this thing, if the weather's nice out, obviously, because I didn't even bring the windows and shit with me. They sat in my garage. There's no better head clearer, you know, yeah. and yeah. and um, it's a, it's like a fifth or sixth car. It's not yeah. it's not a second or Dude, third or even fourth car. It's like a fifth I mean, car. W- one of my dream cars, besides the, the three wheeler, is uh, like just a Lotus Seven or a Caterham Seven. Yeah. Or whatever. Oh, yeah. Like the crudest, you can put your palm on the ground. It's so low, no doors. You know, burn yourself on the pipes. Oh, there's it, my kid in the background. The Morgan um, drives the the, the 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 dynamics of it are basically just like a seven. The front yeah. and are the you rear. Serious? Yeah, the front and rear are doing two completely Wait, different things. The sevens drive that badly. Yeah, they don't drive well. What? I mean, they're good. I never did one. I'm just well. like they drive well in terms of the fact that they're loosey goosey and fucking yeah, 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 ragged yeah. and scary. The, it's yeah, a, it's yeah. a it's a it's a it's a more high perform. The, the sensations so are the sad same. Right now. The sensations are the same. The front okay. wheels are way over there. Right, right. You're, You're way sitting back on the here axle. on the rear axle. Yeah. It's the same. Does the seven have yeah. steering feel? Because this the steering's better in the seven. I mean, it is fucking yeah, yeah, better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm really mad at everybody. The steering's very tractor like in the Morgan. It's very it's it's better in the seven, but still it was developed when tractors were developed. Like it was, it's 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 fine. Yeah, yeah tractors no, were the sure cops. I'm sure I would love it. I'm, I'm sure I would love it. <laughs> it's a good time. I, but the Morgan does feel kind of like a, a more substantial seven. That's okay. that's sort of what it feels the, like. The yeah. luxury seven. Yeah, yes. yeah, seven with leather. <laughs> do you, do you think you get a similar experience from the Morgan as you'd get from driving any old car like 33 Ford, 46, what like Cadillac? No, like? no, and here's why: because because your hands and feet still drive it kind of like a modern car. 
you don't have that oh, you true. don't have that in the back of the head this is an old thing that i have to care for because it's because it's it, new is it yeah. is it manual yeah it's a I five think. speed from a miata Okay, so I was gonna say, so it feel, that that to me is always when I get in an older car, transmissions. I guess people used to be like weaker or something, but transmissions <laughs> feel so delicate. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, like, like you know, like a Miata, you can you know power shift the thing or whatever. But I was driving, you know, Dom Infante from Subaru. He's got a um, Austin Healey three thousand. Uh huh. Beautiful. And like killer car. I mean, it's a you know big straight six, uh, three liters, w- tons of power. Um, Everything's cool except the transmission. It, it was like it was like a, a cocktail umbrella yeah. in like Jello. <laughs> yeah, it was just felt. It just you just I just that to me is a limiting factor. So you're just not going to power shift it because it'll bend. You yeah, know? I drove so uh, I drove Dieter's Gullwing, the 300 SL Gullwing, which has a yeah, very yeah. delicate shifter as well. Yeah, yeah. A, a Gullwing is as easy to drive as a Beetle. The pedals it, and the shifter and the steering are as easy it, as a Beetle. It, it, it's the greatest. I, I, that actually is probably my favorite all-time car. If I could, if you just give me a million bucks, I would figure out a way to get uh, a 55, 56 Gullwing. They're Have you like, seen the guy in Malibu with the really super faded red one? That's yes. fu- and he and he drives the piss out of it, and he's smoking a cigar, and he doesn't yeah. give a fuck. Yeah. He's, that no. guy rules. Yeah, there, there's one in like San Marino, Pasadena type area, uh, La Cunada, Flint Ridge that is like lavender colored it, it looks like like bath soaps <laughs> with like i know exactly the like, color you're talking about my mother was an the, expert in bath soaps <laughs> yeah 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 with with like a with like a purple white interior it mm. is the dopest fucking car <laughs> i i just with matched match luggage her royal and highnesses apparently it's factory it was like a one-off for for like not natalie wood but another starlet from the 50s grace and kelly i don't know could have been it's I just, just it. It's mind blowing. It's I, I was like I've never really wanted a pink car with a purple interior <laughs> until now, and I really want it. You know. You know that um oh what's her name Diane Warren the very famous songwriter. You know her. I, yeah. I know who she is. She, yeah, no, you no. know if you saw her resume, it's like boom 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 yeah, boom yeah, boom yeah. boom. So she hangs out at Bills in Malibu, and I was she at drives. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. I'm going tomorrow if you want to meet if you want to meet me. Uh, the, the safari needs some exercise, and. Uh, and she drives this paint to sample AMG GTC, the convertible, in this gorgeous like turquoise, like a light turquoise oh, yeah. paint to sample. It's bitching. And it's like the modern version of what Johnny's talking about. It looks like a like a soap. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. By yeah. the way, the, 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 uh, the hardtop version of the GTC. Uh, that's my vote as most underrated car uh, you can buy right now. Can you like, explain the nomenclature of the AMG yeah, GT? Because so I don't actually okay. know it. So all the AMG coupes, you got you got a GT, uh, you got a GT convertible, GTS, uh, which I think they're phasing out actually, but there was a GTS and a GTS convertible. Then there was the horribly named but wonderful car, the GTC, and there's a GTC and there's a GTC Roadster. She right? has the Roadster. Diane's got the Roadster. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's the GTR. So and what's the, the GTR difference Roadster between and S and C? Uh, the C, okay, the, the S is 517 horsepower, and mm-hmm. the C is 550. The C gets the wide body kit. Oh, okay, um, got it. Th- those are the big differences. It's The C's just like... The C is like going from a 911 Carrera S to a GTS. You know what okay, I mean? Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's, and it's got it's, the, and the vertical slats on the grill. Yes. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I got gotcha, you. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. It, Mercedes has a red one, I think, still in the fleet. Just ask for it. it it'll blow your fucking mind. Like, I got it. for I, some reason, my relationship with Mercedes is not what it should be. They don't. Well, they just don't that. get back to me. It's weird. weird. I love the, I love the shape of these cars. I just do. They're yeah. Gorgeous. They're, They're fucking they are. cool. They're I think really, the grill really, really pretty. pretty. Yeah. Zach, see, get it. First of all, fuck car and driver. Get I know. Your motor I, going. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, I'm, lo- I'm just looking as fast as I can. <laughs> I know they have they they have better Google results than we do, but we're someone paid that. for that SEO, bro. Yeah, <laughs> I top know. results. I know. <laughs> uh, but uh, try and get a rear three quarter of the GTC. That's the angle. That's because it's the wide body, but it doesn't have all the race bullshit that the GTR has, and it doesn't have the horrible suspension. Not horrible, but the beat you up. Uh, on public street suspension the GTR has it's like the, yeah the GTR nice. is super gnarly suspension right 
Gnarly, gnarly. It's like the Z01 one LE. Oh, the one LE. Oh my God, that thing was so great on the track and just destroyed my spine. (laughs) Fuck me up. It's the same shocks. It's it's Multimatic does the shocks. Oh really? AMG GTR. Yeah. Oh, so it's it's, exactly the same. Oh yeah. So it's probably fucking brutal. It's not quite as brutal as that Camaro because. I think the Camaro, there's literally no rubber in the rear suspension. It's just metal, <laughs> metal, metal. But the this has like one rubber bushing, but it it That's beats very you up. Pretty. Yeah, see, see if you can find the coupe though. I the was tr- I tried. Yeah. Uh, trust me, I tried. Yeah. Um, it, it's it's just like Zach's I, fingers I, are really working, Johnny. It's just not yeah, going. It's, just it's not motor, going our way. Know, <laughs> I type in Motor Trend, I get car and driver results. It's oh, weird. <laughs> No, but, but honestly, I'm touché, trying. I'm trying. Touché, I'm, touché. I'm trying to find coupe photos on um, on your site, but it looks like the thing that that pops up the quickest. Oh, is, you don't uh, have to look at our site. Just just put, just put in. Well, last time AMG. I looked somewhere else, you yelled at me, <laughs> Dad. I was defending my brand. I right. understand. I'll, I'll yeah, find yeah. one real quick. They are they're amazing cars. I think the the yeah. grill's getting a little aggressive for me. It's getting a little bit like Julian Slicer, but. They drive and look so good from the side. The, the C, I'm telling you, is just That's, like... Is that the really so one to have? Good. The C? It, the C is like... And again, they, they killed themselves because nobody can keep the name straight. Right. You know? and then I, they, yeah, I'm know, a professional and I'm super confused. <laughs> them I'm the only person. I know more than Mercedes about it. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 then, and then they got the four-door, right? They got the GT53, the GT63, and the GT63S. Yeah. So those are all the four-doors. I'm starting to see those around. They're they're kind of they're, they're pretty great. cool. Yeah, they're they're cool. I'd really like to have a go in one of those too. Man. You haven't driven that yet? No, I'm telling you, I, there's Bro. I, 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 there's something that is unstable about my relationship with Mercedes because unless I unless when I was working at the, at Drive and we were doing the television show, I was able to get cars, and I really um, since I stopped doing the television show with the cars, I really haven't been able to to get real responses and con- confirms on the on. But on you're the cars. you're road and track. I mean, you're 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 in. You're in the club. Well, it, I should ask Travis to to send me on whatever their next launch is, and so I can yeah, do yeah. some schmoozing. I think I think uh, with road and track, I do launches for them. I don't okay. do as much take it home and write about it. Although right, that right, uh, right. obviously with coronavirus, that's been that's been adapted a little bit. I don't know how many launches did you have canceled from coronavirus. I mean, I didn't have a ton because just the way my my job was set up, I, I you know, I, I didn't personally have a ton. I think I had one. But Motor Train, we had, you know, we were on every launch and everything was canceled. I, I, I personally, in March and April, had five press cars and four press launches canceled. And the only reason, in fact, the only reason that I drove, I drove three Porsches in the month of April. And the only reason is because I was literally just bullshitting with with Frank, who yeah. works at Porsche yeah. and is also yeah. like my homie. And I realized yeah. that like I'm a journalist and my homie works at Porsche. But like my homie who works at Porsche also used to be a journalist like before he worked at Porsche. So did, like, did you whatever. I know I know you're on a social media break. Did you did you look at his happen to look at his uh social media feed today his instagram i did not what is there something i need to know oh he just had like a flashback to the time he drove a tuned enzo around the nurburgring <laughs> oh when he was with uh auto build and sport uh, automotor and sport automotor yeah. and sport um, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah no i mean the guy dude that was that's I, I i was talking about this the other day on a different podcast but um that's the single most humbling experience in my life i had a uh porsche 911 uh Targa GTS, right? So good, good car. And I'm Very on the Nurburgring, car. and Frank is in front of me in a diesel Audi TT on winter tires, and I could not pass him. Really? He couldn't get away from me, but I could not pass him. Like, just, why does Frank never talk about the fact that he's a very good driver? Why, it, I've it, never it, heard him no, mention he, this ever. He's like expert level. Get the no, fuck he out to, of he, here. He used to do. That's all he did was Nurburgring testing. I mean, I know he magazine. worked at like a German tuner testing magazine, but I didn't. It, yeah. He was the shoe. Fuck out of here. He's very. He, he is the quiet assassin. He really is. Him, Seriously, him and, I think him and Christian Gephardt, who's still there, by the way. Gephardt's quick. Gephardt raced with uh, Jethro at the, at the like two years ago at the Nurburgring twenty four hour. Um, Christian's a cool guy, but yeah, Frank is like. No, I, I mean, I know to, Frank rules, but I didn't know that he was but, like a hot shoe. Now, that's a very just, interesting twist. 
Just think about all the bullshit he has to put up with, though, with people like, yeah, like, the car was understeering, the 911 d- d- did this wrong, and he's yeah. like, oh, okay, yeah, sure. Does. Now I feel yeah. kind of privileged that, like, that I've been I've been approved as not being a complete piece of shit. Now I'm like, all right, cool. Well, he's guy he's also the nicest guy in the business, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's yeah, a lot yeah. of them. And it's yeah. interesting. I think it's very interesting how um, in not just at Porsche, at, at other companies where you see the the people who are former journalists or, and become, you know, they jump over and they become manufacturer reps and then former manufacturer reps sometimes jump the other way and, and become journalists. It's sort of an interesting uh dichotomy um i i think you and i are like two that could never go to the dark side i I couldn't no i couldn't do it i couldn't do it no i'd 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 just be like you're a fucking asshole i saw you (laughs) supporting trump on facebook (laughs) fuck you you don't get a car (laughs) fuck you um oh man i could yeah i'd have a real problem biting my tongue there's some people that gotta do that you have to be nice to everybody (laughs) yeah that's true. Could you you imagine? Like it's just it would kill me. It would yeah. kill me. I look at some of your guests on this podcast and I'm like, how do you do it? So Oh, <laughs> that's mean as fuck. No, you know, we've okay, look. We are I actually uh, agree with you without sing- signaling anybody out. I think that in the quest for guests, I have sometimes booked people that uh, ultimately have not turned out to be great at radio. I think one of the great things we can do with Zoom and Skype is for guests that we think, even after this bullshit's over, uh, is be like, listen, this guy might be great for 20 minutes, but not 90 minutes. Well, we'll have him call in for 20 minutes, and then we'll go about our our oh, business. I, I think I, that's I really been, that'll be a major thing to solve, because there's a lot of folks who you want to get on the show, but really only have 20 interesting minutes. <laughs> well, I was going to say, I'm not going to name names or anything, but there's been a couple Please where don't, they don't, do don't great shows. The, the shows you can listen to for two hours, they're just pricks. That's all. Mm. Yeah, that's well, all. look, you but, know. You know but I, you? That's why I couldn't do PR because, like, <laughs> yeah. You know, I, yeah. yeah. Johnny, yeah. Johnny crossing yeah. over to the manufacturer's side would be so entertaining for the month he has a job. <laughs> 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 That'd be perfect. <laughs> Um, what, yeah. what is, mm. when you are, when you can go back to travel again, what's the first place you're going to go? Well, dude, it's so depressing. So my wife, my 10 year wedding anniversary is coming up. Oh, congratulations. Wife, That's fantastic. Thank you. Good thank for you. you. And, my, and my wife and I had a beautiful, uh, 10 day trip to Italy booked oh, and, um, not a good yeah. place to have booked right now. Yeah, yeah. May May nineteenth is when we landed in Milan, and uh, immediately when coronavirus hit, Delta canceled every flight uh, yeah, starting May twentieth. So, um, oh my God, I, wait, are you saying you didn't get a refund on that trip? Is that what you're trying I, to say? I haven't even tried yet. Honestly, I haven't even tried yet. I haven't. Oh, even, I, I'm you I'm like you know sooner a rather than on later. Delta. <laughs> What's that? You should try. Soon. I know, I know. Yeah, it's a lot of money too. It's I know. Yeah. Money. No, I know. It's it's, but it's one of those like I paid for it, so like I don't miss the money because it's mentally gone. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll I, tell you what I, though, I you'll appreciate it when it comes back. <laughs> well, sadly, it'll just it'll all go into a basket case nine fourteen. But yeah, yeah, I will, I will. Um, so yeah, I I'd like to go back to I miss Italy a lot. I um, that you know, it, it's one of those weird perks of the job where. I wound up in Italy three or four times a year, every year for the last 15 years. And I get to eat actual Italian food uh, three or four times a year instead of the stuff we get here. And uh, I, I, and then like Italian people, I, I, I really miss that. Best country. It's the be- best. It is. It's the best country. country. It's the, be- the best. It's country. the fucking best. You know best what we should best. do, Johnny, is I think we should take collective advantage of the fact that massive Italian villas in Tuscany are very cheap to rent. Yeah. And and yeah. we can pull together some folks and rent a ten or twelve bedroom, fucking giant palace, yeah, for like a yeah. thousand bucks a day, divided yeah. among ten couples. You know what I'll, I mean? Like I'll, it'll be comically cheap. We'll grab some press cars. We'll yeah. just fucking run around to the farmers markets in the press cars. We'll grab some shit and then we'll cook it at the villa, and that I'll, will be I'll, the story. I'll make the bread. You do the rest of the cooking. We'll be set. Your bread is so on point, dude. I'm oh, jealous dude, of your you gotta, bread. I, 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 I got somebody hit me to this. Uh, um, um, I don't know what you call it. A, a mill in Texas, and uh, I'm blanking on the name. It's like 
Bart, Barton's Mill or so. I'll, I'll look it up in a second. But um, they have they they make like uh, uh, pasta grade. Yeah, that's the stuff. They make like pasta grade flour, like that double zero grind. Yeah, oh that's yeah, that's the good shit. And then and then they do, but they do like they have different levels of uh, quality of, of wheat. And uh, I made one that was like. It was probably like a twenty dollar loaf just for the ingredients, <laughs> you know. I mean, total it was dank, waste, though. Yeah, man, it was amazing, right? It's yeah, it, it was so good, like it, it was shocking. Yeah, yeah. What you need but is yeah, to, this, you got to combine a loaf like that with the yeah. olive oil that I imported from Italy. Yes, which I is need like better olive oil. The yes. super yes. special, like the olive oil I got from Italy. You cannot buy on the internet. I had to send somebody in Italy to physically go buy yes. twelve yes. bottles from them and yes. ship them to me. So, so I, I I don't always get it, but actually, you and I are, are lead very funny lives. So, um, stuff like that. So, uh, 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 remember you did that thing where you had Guy Ferrari tell you how to do a, a steak. Yes, I did. I did text Guy Fieri and ask him what yeah. the best method would be to cook a steak. And to, so, his, to his I ever know. patient credit, he got right back to me and was all about it. Would you cook a steak? I, so, you cooked like a no, thousand. No, no, I bought a 48 ounce oh, right, right, right. Wagyu yeah, yeah. porterhouse from Charcoal. And I was like, Guy, how do I yeah. not fuck this steak up? You're going to get a George Foreman. Reverse sear, brother. <laughs> Reverse sear. So, so that same day, and I know you don't look at social media, but that same day, uh, Michael Simarusti, who's the you know the chef of Providence, he's like I, I was like hey I'll make you some cheese bread because I'm just in the baking right now. He's like great I got some steaks of Providence I got to get rid of come pick them up and it's oh, like awesome it's like it's like the A five shit that Providence serves with yes you, you know they have two Michelin stars that's that's what they are so I, you know so I'm sitting there cooking them and I'm like oh like and and Michael's telling me how to cook them so I'm like you're getting like you know Guy Fieri I'm getting Simarusti. It was just I'm like we, we lead, lead very charmed lives, lives cool. dude. We lead charmed it, lives, you know. When you're when you're an strange. expert in something that alpha people are into, you yeah, can yeah, parlay yeah. that into a a quid pro quo. I yeah. I I mean, guy is like the I can't believe how nice guy is. I I'm like I've heard that. I've I'm heard that, fucking yeah. s- s- gobsmacked by how nice guy is, and yeah. um and 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 it's it's really shocking. And and I actually I texted him. Uh, after after Carl died, and I was like, "Look, man, Carl was always my. He always answered any food question, any like food science question or cooking question. Like, I would just text Carl and like, and he was like, i 'I'm your guy.' And I was like, nice. I was like, you're, but you're the mayor of Flavor Town. Like, you're not. You can't. You can't be my guy. And he's like, if Carl was your guy, I'm your guy. And I I try to not take advantage of that. So I've I've asked him. Two questions. One right. question. One was how to cook that steak. Question two was Hannah, uh, my wife, wanted to know why if you go to Cold Stone and you just get a scoop of vanilla ice cream, the vanilla ice cream is garbage. It's just not good ice cream. My theory was that well, they their whole shtick is topping, so they develop a specific ice cream that optimizes the toppings. Guy's explanation was much simpler. <laughs> If they knew how to make ice cream, would you get the fucking toppings? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they buy they probably buy the cheapest ice cream they can find. Yeah, it's yeah. all about the topping. Totally, but right? But, uh, and, but and, yeah, and, we do lead charm lives, Johnny, for sure. What? what oh, yeah, well, I was just say, in fairness, I don't even bother to ask Michael questions because he's so good that like it's pointless. He, I actually just sent him a pic. I mean, I put on Instagram. I sent a picture of me cooking the steaks, and he replied like. Wow, you actually look like you know what you're doing. You yeah, no, the cook. chefs fuck with me too. The chefs, the chefs on Instagram. When I put up some pictures of food, fucking Sang, Sang Yoon, oh. fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. celebrity chef. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you know him, Johnny, but the audience oh, yeah. might not. Uh, yeah, who, yeah. Sang basically invented the gastro pub uh, yeah. uh, 23 years ago in Los Angeles, the father's office. He's a genius, <laughs> and, and he's a good friend. Johnny introduced me to him, and he's hilarious, and he just comments on my food posts like huh maybe i should start reviewing cars yeah, now yeah. and i just like i want to crawl into a ball and fucking die and i'm like uh, people are like you should make food videos i'm like no sang made fun of me <laughs> <laughs> have you have you eaten at luke sean yes oh my god dude. oh my god but so number you know, 18 he d- best restaurants in los angeles 2020 luke yeah sean. so so before he died 
Jonathan Gold, uh, his final like power list, whatever you call it, uh, for restaurants in LA. He had that one like artsy place. I can it starts with a V. I can't remember the name. It was Vespertine. Vesper- What's that? Vespertine is the that's no- and the that's that's where the guy makes food that looks like clouds and shit. Yeah. Wait, is that, in, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. is that the multi-story restaurant experience thing that's in like West Hollywood? No, no, that's I like don't... the crazy diner thing. This yeah, is okay. like some fucking like way over the top where they build meals with tweezers. <laughs> yeah, no, no, this is like this is like the first course is a scent, you know, and then the next course you stick your hand in a box. <laughs> the chef comes out and just farts it. in your yeah. mouth. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> but so 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 um, so anyway, yeah. so that was number one. But I, it was I think just that one year, and then two was Providence, which had been number one for four years, and then three was Spaga, which pretty good restaurant. Everyone's heard and of. Four was Luke Sean Sang's place. And and Jonathan basically said if Sang wasn't so fucking lazy, he'd be higher up. <laughs> and That's and funny. Uh, and uh, it's true because he's a, he's a fucking genius. Like you'll. You'll you'll eat this dish and it seems like the simplest thing in the world and you're like, well, how do you make it? He's like, oh well, you know, seventy two hours of taking <laughs> yeah. um, this, this tea leaf from Burma yeah. that I have to like pay a guy to smuggle in because <laughs> you know we have a, we have sanctions against Burma and uh, that does it's, it's fucking crazy. And it, like it, say, it's like so this is a good, good burger. How do you make it, Sang? Well, the, yeah. You, you, yeah. you only get cows whose names start with the letter C. Right. <laughs> and, right. and the story of this no. burger starts in 2011. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's but like like Luke's. I you know you know Jonathan Ward, our buddy. Um, I did. Uh, you, you, we were there together. Remember his big charity woo ha. Yeah. Um, so Jonathan and I got auctioned off, and you got to get a meal with with him and I at uh, at Luke Sean saying agreed to do it, and like he just pulled out all the stops for this meal. It was just. I should have written it down. I was I was talking to the guy too much, but it was it was such a good meal. Just There's so nothing good. better than going to a restaurant where the chef wants to show off for you. There's nothing fucking better than that. Carl brought me to a couple of places, APL in Hollywood, Adam Perry oh, Lang. Yeah. When I went yeah. there with Carl and it was like, oh, Carl's here. Fucking dishes are coming out and you got to, I mean, the, the ta- they had to put another table next to our table to put the fucking dishes on. So, okay. Right so now. we did that so, at, uh, <laughs> what's, the, what's the, um, the Thai place in Vegas? Oh, at Lotus oh, of Siam. The first time we went <laughs> there, we ordered so much before people, they, <laughs> yeah. they they looked at us, they looked at the list, and they started bringing the food out, and they had to bring over a second table, and <laughs> yeah. I was like, I think yeah. we might have overdone it, and we ate, <laughs> God, we looked, we were just gluttons, it was amazing. Oh so, my so, God. So three points, three points. Uh, Matt, go to Park's Barbecue with Sang, because he's like kind of the second most famous Korean uh, in, in L.A., um, um, and like I went to parks with him and it's like they're like oh here's here's the A5 here's the fucking oh like, yeah I like this plan stuff comes out of the back like you've never seen you know what I mean I like this um, plan it, it was incredible so so do that and then one time I took Devereaux to Providence and um, I, I, no one even believes this story but basically we had a 27 course meal with 28 wine pairings Jesus what? Christ I, I don't remember getting home. Do you, yeah, have to bring a, you had to bring a sleeping bag. <laughs> the, well, let my, not only is Michael the, the the chef and the owner and a good friend of mine, but the one of my, my one of my very 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 best friends is the head waiter there. Jesus so he took me home. Christ. But but like the next day, Pat just did nothing but text me pictures. Like you know when like a snake eats a deer. <laughs> 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 like, there's, there's a leg sticking out of the stomach. You know that's I, that's all he did was text me that. Like we couldn't even move. It was so so disgusting. Did you remember courses fifteen through twenty seven? Like I, at some point, did they just kind of blur together. Th- yeah, yeah, of course, of course. When I go with my wife, we write everything down and we reminisce. This, although I do remember, I'll never forget this one dish. It was um, it was uh, it was like a pho, but instead of noodles, he used a squid. So he cut up squid to look like noodles. And then the broth was that the the A five beef he gets whatever what I forget the brand but it was it was A five beef broth with squid like it was liquefied just, beef like fuck but but I had to I remember like they they pour it and I had to I had to pee because I have like you know fifteen glasses of wine at that point or whatever it was 
And the way I'm like, how long till we eat this? He's like, you have a minute. So I'm running to the bathroom. And then Simarusti, who's like your size, is like, what are you doing? This is an experimental dish. Like, go back, go back. And I'm like, oh. They're like blocking the bathroom. That's the last thing I remember. There's no time. But the, the uh, meringue Zach, is collapsing. You, if you like Lotus of Siam, which is like the best restaurant in Nevada by a factor of 10 million. Yeah. Um, have you been to Jitlada in I Hollywood? Have. Twice. We have Amazing. on your recommendation, and it was okay. a fucking banger, dude. That yeah, place dude, this, rules. Bad no, service, nothing. great food. <laughs> yeah, the service was horrible. The service is like, listen, uh, we know how good our food is, and you can go fuck yourself until we bring it to you. <laughs> we'll come back and take your order minutes, tomorrow. But once the food uh, comes. No, the food was in- absolutely incredible. You were yeah. right. That, that was yeah. a killer recommendation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, For those no, who were like, what did he just say? It's called yeah. Jit Lada, and it's in Hollywood, and it's yeah. J-I-T-L-A-D-A. And it's like um, it's like Hollywood and Harvard, yeah. or Sunset and Harvard. But- <laughs> It, it it is it was it's extremely it dank is. extremely yeah. dank yes yeah it's i my i read some review of it that was like you know it's not that it's the best thai restaurant in la <laughs> and it's not that it's the best thai restaurant in california and it's not that it's the best you know thai restaurant in the us it's that it's the best restaurant in the U.S. <laughs> or something like that. It was it was amazing. It was it is yeah. it's extremely good. I, I yeah. There's there's yeah. you know what I love. I fucking love this city for for those oh. options, and it bums yeah. me out that I can't explore them right now. Have you found any uh, restaurants by you that have pivoted to any interesting coronavirus business models? Our coffee shop down the street, they've they've they basically have turned into like a grocery delivery service. Mm-hmm. So you can get like a, a latte in like a like a Odwalla bottle, a cold latte, and then they'll drop off like eggs and avocados and flour and shit like that. Um, uh, not really. I mean, we we go like Philippe's. Um, I'm close enough to downtown that I can go to Philippe's, and it's you know one of my favorite restaurants in the world. And they you know you can pick it up now. Which you couldn't do, um, but nothing, nothing crazy, you know. Hannah's on all these really interesting email lists for these restaurants that are doing different stuff, and uh, and so some of them are doing like limited takeaway menus, and some are doing like buy the ingredients and finish it yourself at home. And it's it's, oh, that's it's cool. been Felix we did the other day. Like you buy the you can buy the pasta. Um, their pasta is like amazing. You buy the pasta, you buy the sauce. It's got very simple ingredients and just and within ten minutes you got you got Felix at home. It's fucking great. Love yeah, it. yeah. I, I wish we were doing more than that. I mean again just with a kid it's like like doing serious cooking's tough. I just basically like the the local places I really like. We're trying to support them. Like there's this place Spitz. It's like you know it's like street Mediterranean food. Um, Zanku chicken. I just want to oh, make we sure love like Zanku. Zanku. That's the yeah. jam right there. That's the uh, yeah, LA yeah. secret. Yeah. 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 Oh, if if anyone listening has a lot of free time on their hands, which uh, <laughs> you probably do for a while, there just Google like uh, uh, Zanku murders. The the story yeah. of like Zanku chicken is fucking insane like the guy that started it murdered his uh his wife and mother it, it's absolutely bonkers it's the cra- or like his no his sister and his mother his sister and his mother it's a wild story and also they have really good garlic sauce oh the garlic sauce <laughs> it's really good Dude, garlic I, sauce. I can eat like four of those just <laughs> with a spoon I, I don't know what the <laughs> secret is that fucking garlic sauce it's they crazy. got the perfect ratio it's like oil potato and garlic sauce but they got it perfect because no, other places go too it's spicy not, it's not potato it's not it's, no? it's just like somebody told me what it was one time and it's like it's actually easy to make but it's like it's crazy, but they it's get like the ratio Crisco right too. And garlic, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's, That's exactly probably, what it is. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's duck fat and garlic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's probably lamb fat, but it's just the greatest thing in yeah. the world. Johnny, yeah. we have yeah. so many questions from people, and I yeah, imagine yeah, they probably want us to talk about cars and not fucking local LA restaurants for a minute. Even though I could sit here for two hours and talk to you about restaurants, I don't we should do Matt. Why don't we? Fuck. Since 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 like. You know, you like you said, you don't want to do a cooking show because of saying, let's do a restaurant review show 
with we're saying, qualified to give our opinion about shit that we can't build. Like, how about shit we can't cook? You know, it's like, we're, 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 <laughs> you know, it's really funny that that restaurant Felix that I got I get the pasta from and bring it home. Felix, the the chef there, Evan Funk is. There's a special about him on Netflix. Actually, he's a super pasta nerd, right? Yeah, he's a yeah crazy yeah. pasta nerd. And it's like it takes like two months to get a reservation. This fucking place. You you always just get one. Like I always have a reservation at Felix because if I can't make it, I'll just give it away. Like It's worth having one all the time because it's so far out. It's but, like Lakers tickets. Good, yeah, yeah. good, good yeah. things will happen. Yeah, yeah. But when I talk to Sang about him, he's like, that guy doesn't know how to make pasta. <laughs> I was like, what? And Evan Funk's thing is that he does this super al dente pasta where it's almost like crunchy. Hannah doesn't oh, yeah, like yeah. it either, actually. And so by getting to take the pasta home and cook the noodles at home and and add a plus 30 seconds on the noodles oh, it actually yeah. makes them better make it, yeah, I, read, style, yeah. I, read makes about, better. I i know about felix and i, I read about, i read your your instagram thing about that and i was like yeah because i don't like i don't like when underdone pasta no oh, yeah sang was like do you like that place and i was like yeah i think it's pretty good he's like that guy makes pasta wrong <laughs> <laughs> i just thought it was one of the funniest things I've ever seen sang's make. annoying because like 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 he's fucking right but i i kind of hate the guy because he's kind of a prick but yeah, i know yeah he's He's right. He's That's right. Like, I mean, uh, it's like the Big Lebowski. It's like, you're right. You're just an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not shit talking about Sang. I fucking love that guy. He I makes me laugh that. all the time. And he, I, he yeah. really did intimidate me into almost giving up posting about food on Instagram. <laughs> no, he does that because he, he has a bakery now, right? He's got the, yeah. he's got the new the Helms Bakery. And mm. I'm... I'm I'm posting bread videos that are getting twenty five thousand views, and he's like, "Fuck you! Like, you don't know how to make bread." Well, he should learn the Carl Ruiz lesson: get famous first, and then. Carl always said, "I love cooking on television because when I tell them it tastes good, they have no choice but oh, to yeah. believe me." Yeah, that's why. Did you, did you guys ever read the article of the? Uh, these people created a fake restaurant. It was all about hype, and there was basically a study in hype. And so they, yeah. they started, they, they made a website and they said, oh, it's very hard to get a reservation. And they built sure. up all this hype and people started calling in, trying to get reservations to a restaurant that didn't exist. <laughs> and then when they finally, so they were like, all right, we know what we're going to do. We're going to make a fucking restaurant. So they made a restaurant and they opened it up. Oh, sorry. The pictures on the website of the quote food they had, they were using like Tied blue detergent over like a weird piece of styrofoam that they made look like fish, so and funny. they were saying this is a deconstructed blah 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 blah, and it's a thing a thing, and people called in and kept trying to get reservations, and I think at the end of it they they had like an opening with six people came in, it was very small, and then they just served them like shitty food, and the whole thing was just all a big plan to have an article sure, about here's but, how I mean, hype that, goes. But, that, that, but that's like <clears throat> so like in the car world. Uh, every five years, some crazy car journalist writes a story. It's like the Bentley flew them to to Europe, and, and and they put them in a nice hotel, and they gave them wine, and they had food, and then he wrote a good review about the Bentley, as if he's like discovered this. Like right. there was an there was an artist. There was an every five years that happened. You know what I mean? Like, like the fucking clockwork. There, I mean, and Zach, not I've to take the discovered out of what you're press launches. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you guys. Uh, yeah, it, it, and, and just remember, the manufacturers only do press launches because it's still cheaper to fly me and Matt somewhere, give us an open bar tab <laughs> at a five-star hotel than it is to move cars around. Yeah. It costs, it costs money. No, but, like, there was an artist who did that who was, you know, was, like, they, they started doing fake articles. But you're just, you're tricking people. And, you know, pe people want to go to a good restaurant. Totally. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. And I want to see. I want to see food art. Man. I want to see food art too. I do. I'm. Mean, if you made me, if the first course was a scent, I'd probably be annoyed, Dude, followed yeah. by oh. impressed. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. You, I, were you there? It was. It was at. It was at one of the launches in in Portugal at that fucking crazy resort that's next to Estoril. Yeah, yeah. And it's. Got I was with you. It was a Ventador SVJ. Yeah, well, I, I'm not sure if we. Yeah, it must have been that launch. Do you remember that restaurant? Like they gave you like a fucking tree trunk, <laughs> shells <laughs> carved into it. Remember? Yes, <laughs> yes I do. But the I food do. was incredible. I like, know it was incredible. And yeah. also that that trip is where you got you got me to start drinking gin again. Oh, I hadn't had gin for 20 years, and you said. 
Farah, we're in Portugal. You drink a gin yeah. and tonic here, and you yeah. gave me the Sipsmith gin with the Fever Tree tonic, and it was dank as fuck. So, so just so everyone knows, so like, if you close your eyes and think of a gin and tonic that you drink where you wherever you live, and then think about a fishbowl and <laughs> picture that. <laughs> The gin and tonics in Portugal are this big. Yeah. And they're just, they're absurd. But yeah, that's that's like the greatest gin bar in the world of that hotel, whatever it's called. Um, they, they have, it's it's just insane. Yeah, that that was a spe- that was me, you, and Nelson. Remember yeah, that? Yeah, you got, you got me into to doing gin again, and I, and I have to thank you for that. Anytime. But we, we smoked cigars and drank the gin and tonics that were this big. That was a good time. I, I flew 18 hours each way for 36 hours on the ground, and I think it yeah. was seven laps in the car. I think the total drive time was seven laps in the car. And then remember remember they just resurfaced? Remember they just resurfaced the track, and so the tires didn't work at all? So yeah, it was slippery like, as the, shit. They had to put the all seasons on, and it was still shitty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but man, good fucking times, man. Good fucking oh, times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's see what the people have to say. They have a lot to fucking say today, so we we're gonna lot. get through as many as we can. And uh, it, what we can't, we'll save for uh, for next time. But I got I got sixty percent battery left, so let's. I'm, that, you I'm, know, got, it's I, funny. I, that's I, been I, like the determining factor in a lot of shows. Actually, <laughs> I did a I did someone else's podcast the other day that literally ended because their phone died. Like that right, was the yeah, end. Yeah. Of the show. It was like Bo Bachman in the beginning. He's like, uh, this pad's got sixty. The other one, I might have to switch mid. You know, switch planes mid flight. I don't think it's gonna work. Bo was great. He was good. He was a good. Bo was the coolest guy. By yeah, he the was way. fun like, as fuck. I love that guy. I, I love that guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, I'm just gonna kind of go for people listening. We're gonna go in order of donation size, and if it's specific to Johnny, we'll please, start with that. I hate to say this because I like money a lot, but please do not add to the super chat at this point Man, in the show. I We're said not that thirty get minutes it. ago. Oh, did you really? People, people keep going. <laughs> <laughs> people keep going. All right. Um, all right. Uh, Zach Toll says, "Thanks for keeping us entertained." Um, are cars like the VW Airtion and Four Series Grand Coupe really four door coupes as they're marketed, or are they actually just wagons in disguise? I I, I wrote a story. 10 years ago called uh, like something like um, uh, German grammatology must be stopped or something. But it's basically like, you know, the G- Germans will just say that's, that's a shooting break. That's a coupe. It's like, well, no, no, no. Uh, Heinz, a shooting break has two doors, not four. And they're like, that's a shooting break. So <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, history is written by the winners. So um, no, it's not a coupe. It's, it's a, it's a sedan with less headroom that they charge more money for, but they look good. Yeah, I, I, I'm I'm with Johnny on all of that. I don't have anything to add. All right. Yeah. Uh, Houston Brady says, who would be faster around an unfamiliar track? Person A drives rear-wheel drive manual cars in real life but has zero track or racing experience. Or person B, who has only driven front-wheel drive economy cars in real life but has sim and understands racing. I assume they're both in a rear-wheel drive car. They're in the same uh, I mean, I, you know. Neither? I like, mean that's a pretty fucking out there hypothetical. I mean, I, I, this is this is the old man. Uh, I'm, I think I'm older than you, Matt. So I'm going to give the old man answer, and that's that Sims are complete bullshit. And uh, <laughs> if you don't have track experience, like whoever has like one lap in under their belt is going to be quicker than the guy that has no laps. Yeah, track experience. Um, oh, beats car experience for sure. Yeah, and yeah. front drive, rear drive, like you kind of just go balls out, but you got to like be. <laughs> Comfortable with going balls out. Doesn't matter what the car is. True. Uh, Ray Lee says, when it comes to brewing beer and making bread, what ingredients do you have, or sorry, what ingredients do you have to be precise in proportions with, and uh, what ingredients can you play around with? Uh, you can play around with everything. Um, I, I think it's it becomes a technique thing, and this is this is impossible to, like, write down. But, like, when I, when I used to brew beer, there's a, a, a wonderful German work, called uh, Vorloff and Vorloff means you recirculate the mass through the grain bed. And um, there's, there's a, there's a time when if I'm making the beer, I say that's enough. And if someone else is doing it, they say that's enough. Um, When the beer starts to boil, what I call a boil is different than what you call a boil. Mm. When you're making bread, there's a feel. So the, the water to flour ratio I know what it feels like. This hand knows. This hand I never use, but this hand knows what it feels like. Um, 
I can't write that down. I don't know how to say like it, it's exactly this moist, but I I've you know when, when this one was less moist and then I ate the bread, I'm like, oh yeah, that was that was had this problem, and it was when it was more watery, that loaf had this problem. So it's 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 just it, like anything in life, it's experience. Like I was I was uh, there's a there's a guy uh, Mike uh, 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 Disrael or uh, I, I believe or. Yeah, I forget his last name, but he's like a, a weightlifter guy I follow on Instagram. And he put up a thing and he was like, the secret to getting strong is to work out three to five times a week for 10 years. <laughs> Wait, say that again. The secret to getting strong yeah. is to work out three to five times a week for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And nobody wants to hear that. Yeah, yeah. totally. What's nobody that, wants what's to that, hear that powerlifting documentary? It was on um, Netflix. The one you know with Eddie about? Hall? The one with or Eddie bigger, Hall. Or bigger, stronger, faster. Might have been bigger. No. That was all about uh, steroids. No, no, no. This is the one about like four different power lifters like who were trying to, to be the, the, the best power lifter or whatever. And there was three younger guys in their late 20s and early 30s. And then there was one guy who was like 47. And the three young guys, it was like their whole family revolved around their eating and their working out and their routine and this everyone pitched in and then the older guy was like had like 17 other hobbies <laughs> besides lifting and and he had what he called old man strength because he said his your cells replenish every so, so many years and all of his cells were replenished with the strong cells and so he at the end i hate to give away spoiler alert documentary spoiler at the end when they go to the to the final competition, the old guy like fucks up these young guys without even trying. And and it's because yeah. he's got the old man strength, I, I he mean, says. There, there's so many variables with strength, but like everything else being equal, um, you know, a healthy man in his uh, even late 40s, early 50s can be stronger than a young man in his like 20s just because the older guy's been just been working out longer and, and you have oh. the you have the potential to keep getting strong into your 50s. Well, there's keep a density and, and also like, I don't know, people like, like my dad has very strong hands and forearms and it's not, yeah. he doesn't, he doesn't lift weights, but it's like he has spent 70 years working, you know, with his hands as a doctor, but he also like oh. does construction projects. Like you just mm -hmm. do shit. Yeah. And if you keep using your hands, like you'll see an old guy and his hand, his finger is like 50% thicker than my finger. Bro, you yeah, go, yeah. To, just go like to Tuscany and you see some 75 yeah. year old Nana that can fucking knead dough like a boss. You know what I mean? I, right. I remember I was in, I was in Dingle, Ireland. <laughs> That's a place? And uh, wow. there was fishermen in the cold, place. like fucking Dingle, ropes Ireland. all day, the Dingle. But they, you know, these fishermen, they're, they're old school. They don't have a crane. They actually pull the fucking ropes. Their forearms, and I have, like, you know, I, I actually trained my forearms. Their forearms were, were thicker than this. I mean, it was, I was in a fish and chip shop just staring at this man's arms because his forearms were bigger than his calves, you know. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it, it, look, and the other thing is that there's genetic potential with strength. So, like, my dad was just really, really strong. I'm, I kind of inherited some of that. Like I, I've always been able to like, I can take a beer bottle cap and like smash it flat in my fingers. You know, I yeah, you tear the cards. Yeah. Tear you tear cards. the cards. That's and, fun. Yeah. And, and it's like part of it's training. I, I, I know how to train forearms. Most people don't know how to train forearms. Cause why would you What a boring muscle, but I jerk um, off constantly. No, well, that no, but, but, really but no, grip, grip training, yeah, hanging is yeah. like you one of the hang. best training the only for thing. grip. There's nothing else. Just, yep. just hang, hang from a bar, and then switch to a towel. When you hang from a towel, you get your thumb involved, and mm. that's that's interesting. The, that's the secret to grip. Um, but anyways, so it's you can actually get stronger. Now you get everything else sucks. You like everything hurts. You know, like, <laughs> like if I sleep if I sleep on the pillow wrong, it's like I I fell off a fucking building. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Um, um, but and, and I'm winded and I'm ugly and fat, but I'm pretty strong. And you're good at making bread, which was the point of the question. And his oh, practice right. makes perfect. That's how we got there. Was I, the making I, bread. I, I forgot. We took a hard yeah, left. The tailor's but it's working. Okay. I don't know. It's all right. Yeah. There's no. So, we, so we're allowed old, to do that. It's our old show. Old age and tenacity. I have a old one quick bread question though. Whenever, like, when you when you you put your yeast with your with your water, right? It says put the yeah. yeast in lukewarm water. What temperature yeah. do you call lukewarm? Like I don't do luke lukewarm. I do cold. It doesn't oh, do? matter. Oh, okay. it, it doesn't matter. Here's the secret. You ready? Mm. This is going to blow everyone's mind. Mm. Yeast is cheap. Use more. 
Mm. Whatever whatever the recipe says, mm. triple it. Seriously? Yeah, that's what I do. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's cheap. It's oh, cheap. I didn't, I didn't realize that it... It, the, the, well, the cost of it wasn't the holdback for me, honestly. Yeah. I just no. thought that that's what the recipe required, and if you put too much, it would get too yeasty, and that would somehow yeah. be a problem. Nope, 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 oh. nope, nope. Well, that's good. To um, know. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's I. So you know everything I know about bread, I learned from a book called My Bread by Jim Leahy, who owns a bakery. Um, and I think when he developed all the recipes, he was using his yeast strain, which is better than you can buy at home. He was using his oven which is like a ten fifty thousand dollar <laughs> oven. Yeah. You probably have a five hundred dollar oven. Um, he was using like, you know, uh, his salt, which is probably like the best salt in the world. Right, so, right, right. Uh, my secret to bread is uh, I, I use three times as much salt. Um, I use three times as much yeast and uh and I, I turn the oven up a little bit more That's than the That's a really good to do. tip. That's a really good tip. I, all three of those tips are really good. I actually really yeah. like those. All right, cool. Yeah. My specialty, skillet cornbread. Skillet, you, I can, you can't even fuck with my skillet cornbread. It's bomb as fuck. It's, it's the shit. I'm uh, getting into pasta. I, I, I haven't really posted it yet because I got to get to so like... Good. A level where I'm comfortable with, but I'm gonna I'm gonna take over the. I will game. send you my Tuscan women cook. So me and my wife for our honeymoon, we went to this thing called Tuscan women cook. It's a week in Tuscany with these old nanas teaching you how to cook Tuscan food. I will send you their lasagna recipe. It's extremely game over. You cannot go yeah. back once you've had. It. Yeah. And I'm anyone sure. who I'm wants sure. to do a great vacation in Italy, Tuscan women cook. I was gonna hit you up. We had I I mean we had booked these tickets and fucking like. September to go in May to Italy for 10 days and uh, we're just completely hosed because I'm sorry that sucks balls dude it's we'll, we'll refigure it out we'll get the we'll get the house it'll be fucking great we'll just bring the Tuscan women with us it'll be fine Zach what else do the people have um Matt D said you told me to come back and ask when Johnny was on I'm a medium format film photographer by hobby and I would like some recommendations on landscape spots in LA so you, oh interesting uh, he, he lost me with words like medium, format, <laughs> and photography. I think he, he um, knows that you know pretty places. That's probably what I'm, I'm, that's what I'm figuring. I mean, right, look, I, I will just say this. Right now, go down to Panga Canyon in Malibu. Uh, it is like fucking popping. It is, I've never seen it's, L.A. look more beautiful. It's so green right now. It's yeah. like dark it's, green. It looks there's like a, there's yellow, a poppy bloom purple. in the Antelope Valley as well. Right now, there's a, yeah. a super bloom. Um, yeah. in the Antelope Valley with poppies. Dude, right now is the best time to take architecture photographs because there's no fucking people on the streets. How often do you get to take architecture photographs or urban photographs with empty streets in daylight? That's like, that never happens. I, take I, advantage of that. I shouldn't even say this, but we, we did a photo shoot a few weeks ago and um, we, were, we were at Pacific Design Center and I'm like, we're going to the next spot and I'm like, Let's just go to the Chinese theater and I'll just do U-turns on Hollywood Boulevard because there's no one there. Yeah. And we just shot in front of the fucking Chinese theater. Yeah. Doing U-turns on Hollywood Boulevard. There's no people. Yeah. We had um, Ted Cashew on the show a couple weeks ago who just, and he was just saying, yeah, take advantage of that for urban and architecture uh, photography for sure. Yeah. I, I mean, I've, 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 I grew up like a few miles from Malibu. Um, I, that's how I learned to drive was driving to Malibu. I've never seen it look better, and and also like L L.A. air quality right now is is is, is better than it's yeah. been in. I mean, I'm going to be 45 soon. It's better, you know. I've never seen it like this. Yeah. So we got we got um, nice clean air right now. It's very very good time to get sunset. <laughs> get your stuff. breathing in now, folks. Get yeah, your breathing for sure. in, <laughs> dude. Go up in the Angeles Forest. I mean, pick you know, pick your turnout, pick your overlook. I mean, there's there's hundreds of them. Yeah, I would even say. I mean, Angeles Forest is it, it's not looking like extra pretty because it's just not that. It's just frankly not that pretty. It's nice, but not it's not like Malibu. Um, but uh, I would get up to like like Santa Barbara, Los Olivos, uh, wine country. Right now is probably like better than it's ever looked. Um, and uh, up like Santa Clarita is probably super green uh -huh. for a couple more weeks. It is, Santa Clarita is great. I was just up there. It's really really good right now. Like Bouquet Canyon yes. and that lake right there is probably like 
as as good as it'll ever look. I don't want to give it away, but I think it's probably okay. You know, on Bouquet Canyon, there's some off-roading trails that come down from that mountain on the south side of Bouquet Canyon Road. There's three main off-road trails there, and they're closed right now to trucks, but Hannah and I have gone up to Bouquet Canyon and hiked those off-road trails because they're, like, away from people. They're, like, 60 miles outside of town. They're really good hikes if you want to get outside of town. They're and, all fucking and, awesome. And I, we shouldn't even been saying this but like bouquet canyon is probably the most underappreciated road in la it's like it's fucking mental yeah if you have a medium That's- speed car you you don't want a crazy fast car there you need a handling car that really is optimized for 30 to 80 miles an hour and that's a yeah. fucking great perfect road for it really really good Rand- road. randy randy popes and i did uh we did audi r8 and uh porsche turbo on that road oh and it was it Full was too much car like, <laughs> It was too much car for me. Randy was fine, but like, it was- <laughs> but don't but don't you feel like it's uh even if you can handle it, it's like the road is so tight, you don't get to it's use so what tight. that car can do. I mean, you're like first second gear, first second gear, first second gear. Um, yeah, it's probably true, but it's just like it's so pretty in spring time, yeah. and and there's that lake at the end of it, and there's that like two miles straight away at the end of it. So it's, it's a great road. <laughs> There's a that really no long about. straightaway. At, on that straightaway is where the hiking trails are on the right side. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What else you got, Zach? Uh, Johnny, someone says, how is the Fiesta with a kid? Um, he is having a baby soon. He currently has a 2016 Mustang GT, and he doesn't want to do a two-door with a baby. Okay, so I'll give my my I've, I've, uh, my standard answer and then my, my reality. Uh, I always tell this story. Years and years ago, I was at the uh, Brembo Brake Factory, and I got a tour and it was really cool. And um, for because we had a lot of camera gear, the van was tight. So the PR lady from Brembo, who was Italian, lived there. She took me in her personal car rather than me riding the van. And she had a Citroen C3, which is probably the size of a Golf. And she, as we get in the car, she goes, I apologize that I have such a big car, but I have two teenage sons, so I need a lot of room. So <laughs> the American thing where you have to buy a, like a freaking excursion because you have one baby, um, <laughs> it doesn't apply. Like I have a friend kid, who just had his first fucking kid and his wife immediately got a Hyundai Palisade. Yeah, the, yeah. Uh, and I'm like, you had one baby. Like you, yeah. you don't need a three row. <laughs> well, the kid needs a rumpus room on no. the go. You know what they said? I, you know what they said? I, Cash on the hood, zero percent financing. Yeah. Well, sure, sure. And it, look, Palisade's a nice car, but like you know, we we have an all road, and um, like it's too big. We we just we never we don't need it. My wife wants a smaller car. You know. Um, that said, I'm buying a Julia because fuck it. But to answer his question, <laughs> they're that cheap. Huh? They're, they've, they're, there's enough cash on the hood that we're into the fuck it's. <laughs> no, no, it's not gorgeous, that. It's not man. that. It's just like, no, it's not that at all. It's like, why did I buy a Fiesta? It's because because you know, in 2014, half of every conversation I had for a year ended with no, but the Ford Fiesta SD drives better than the Lamborghini. Blah blah bullshit. So I just finally said, you know what? I bought it. I got to buy it. Um, and then the Julia is the best handling sedan there is. So I'm just going to buy one. Have right. you, is, are you talking that. about you're buying a four cylinder Julia? Yeah, it's for it's for a, it's it's my wife's car. You know, she she it would she wouldn't appreciate the. Okay. No, I don't necessarily need you to qualify why you're not buying the super crazy fast one. I'm curious because I've only driven the really fast one, and Ooh. I'm just curious if the drive, quote lesser drive. ones are worth my time. Oh fuck yeah. Oh, oh, so yeah! It's even better. It's even better because it's lighter on the front end. It's rear wheel drive. It's the same chassis, and it's you know it's like two hundred and eighty horsepower, um, and 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 probably a little underrated. Interesting. Uh, it's yeah. It's 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 well, killer. It's because killer. the Quadrifoglio is like the most expensive way to basically lease uh, lease a loaner. <laughs> 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 you know, Fiat five hundred. Like. Yeah, you could lease a Quadrifoglio and end up with the four cylinder anyway. And, 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 and right, and end up with the, the loaner because <laughs> he's fucking God. mean and right and, and funny. Every, you know what? Okay, I see them on the highway all the time. They are so good looking. They are good they're looking. They're so good. I agree with you. I agree with you. God, listen, they're gorgeous cars. Listen, I hate that Zach, they have problems. Zach, I'm gonna get a I'm gonna get a blue one with red leather interior and yellow brake calipers. It like. That's going to look amazing. Yeah. So to answer his question, um, the, 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 the size of the Fiesta is great. I would be worried about um, it has a two-star um, uh, side impact rating, which means you're not 100% going to die. You're 80% going to die for the, for, if you get hit in the side. Something to think about. 
my kid though, we put him in there and he goes, it's too bumpity. And then he vomits all over himself. So. <laughs> <laughs> however, oh, he however, only likes mid engine cars. The double, however, he needs a double wishbone oh, front and rear. <laughs> however, I have a 2014. So my understanding, and if I'm wrong, somebody call me out in the comments. Um, 14 and 15 had the two bumpity suspension and Ford, they're like, gee, we can't sell any of these. And it, they never thought because it's manual only. They're like, let's soften the suspension and not put out a PR release about it. So if you get a 16, 17, 18, I don't know if they made a 19, but. They did make a the 19. La- the later ones are softer than the, the original. Oh, really? I didn't know that at all. I think that's a very interesting thing to note. Is there is that is that brand new 2019 Fiesta ST still on Bring a Trailer? It went up last week. There was a 300-mile no black Fiesta ST on Bring a Trailer. Wow. So, you, you remember, you know, Sarah, our, our friend Sarah bought yes. one. Yes. And because she, I think she she drove mine because I brought mine somewhere. And she's like, I'm going to buy this car. And she had like, you know, two Porsches. And she's like, because that's how good they are. Um, and then she's like, yeah, mine that I bought, it's not as good as yours. And hers was like a 16. And I, and I drove it. And it's like, yeah, they just softened it a little bit. And it doesn't have the reflexes. Here we go. 132 yeah. mile 2019 Fiesta ST. Current bid 11,000. Two days remaining. Shit. I mean, bro. Oh. I think if anyone who takes this thing home for less than 18 or 19 thousand dollars has a great, great, great buy. Yeah. Right. So the it, miles are so low. It's like someone bought. It's like someone bought it to put in a bubble. He. This dude. Then, I read the comments. The owner said he bought it. Eventually to turn into a track car, which actually doesn't check out. But then he turned another car into a tr- into a track car instead, and just just left this thing sitting in his warehouse and didn't didn't fuck with it and is now getting rid of it. That's, Whatever. That, I mean, that's the yeah. story he's telling. I I love him. I mean, I just like I, I I actually drove to what I thought was an open car wash today, and it wasn't open, so I had to wash it by fucking hand. But just driving it, I'm like, this is I love how this drives. This is better than. The you know ninety five percent of the fucking new press cars I drive. It's one of those cars have, that yeah. makes errands fun. You know. Yeah. You get yeah, a, gr- a run to the grocery store it. becomes a good time. I still car. want one. I missed the TST yeah, one. Buy this one's great. Yeah, it's a little high. I would buy a used one. Yeah. I don't, I don't need this like brand new. I'd be try, afraid. Try of and that. get try and get a first year first year one. I Even think ours was a first year. Up. What was ours? A fourteen? I'm pretty sure ours yeah. was a fourteen. You, you bought yours like a day after I bought mine. Yeah, I think ours was a fourteen. I missed that car. Yeah. Uh, what else we got, Zach? Um, all right, let's see if you guys land on Johnny. Pages you good on here. time and battery power? Fifty-one uh, percent. All right, I, dude. This Chill. is like the most exciting thing that's happened to me in a month. <laughs> like, come on, new new humans. Johnny's so excited to see new humans. <laughs> I mean, the other thing is like I'm I'm like I'm not, like you caught me at a good hour. Like yesterday, I went down to uh, Bills in Malibu with Spike and and Jeff Sharon and Pat Devereaux just to have a little private Porsche show. And I was so exhausted. They're they're saying things to me, and I was just like, <laughs> like I didn't, I didn't, I don't even know what we talked about. I'm, I was fucking brain dead. Well, so, if you recharge, you come meet me there tomorrow. You'd be all right. I'm doing. I can't. I'm doing that. I'm doing that Ford delivery. I remember. Oh yeah, I gotta, right. I got to drop the mass that the the, the 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 damn sick kids need to live or something. How dare you? I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave it alone. Um, all right. Uh, Kellen Nolt says his brother needs a new company car. He's got fifty-one thousand dollars to spend. He says no coupes, convertibles, or pickups. Um, Kia Stinger. Can't use a rebate. Yeah. Fully Last car loaded was a Q5. Kia Stinger. Go I was no. about to all say right. Genesis G70. That's almost the same thing. Six yeah. to one, half dozen the other. If you the, need, the, if you need rear seat room, go Stinger. If you don't need rear seat room, go Genesis. Otherwise, they're basically the same car. Yeah, the gen the Genesis has like I'm, I know they might have I haven't driven the current model year Kia. They might have updated the suspension. The Genesis had better damping than the than the Kia, but the fucking Stinger man, like beautiful. Uh, they're gonna discontinue it. Um, it's just killer. Like they, yeah, and, and and like you know the get one in a fun color. Yeah, get one get one in a color. We yeah. should say because as or Bo orange, said, everything's gray. Blue. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, look at this. Look at the blue on this. Bo Bachman, yeah. the guy selling all the cars, was bummed out that customers didn't want colors anymore. He was super bummed about it. He would love to sell you a car in a fun color if you just that's, would ask for it. <laughs> that's uh, when I when I when I bought the my Fiesta's lava orange whatever. Yeah, great um, color. 
when I when I, when I bought it, they had 22 Fiestas on the lot because they can't sell them because they have manual transmissions and nobody wants that. Um, I think like 18 of the 22 were fucking gray. Yeah. And, you know, and then there was like two blacks and a green and an orange. When I bought the All Road, mine's green. I went, I bought it at um, Fletcher Jones, Beverly Hills Audi. And uh, the guy's like, you really want green? Because we have six silver ones. I'm like, yeah, that's <laughs> why I want the yes. green. In fact, can I special order an uglier green just to yeah. spite you oh. and everybody yeah. else? Yeah, can I mail you a green card <laughs> saying thanks for the service? I, I, You know, it's so funny. You laugh at this, but um, the, the one of the reasons I have the Fiesta ST is... Um, do you remember in the, the, the last generation WRX, the final 500 cars, they made that crazy orange color? Yes. It was like a, okay. Pink so coral. Said, it was like pink coral, like the Thunderbird. <laughs> yeah. So I said, hey, because you're, you're discontinuing the wagon. Because I, I used to, I had, I've owned two WRX wagons. I said, how about this? Take the very last US bound WRX wagon, paint it that color, and I'll buy it. And they're like, yeah, we can't, we can't take wagons and paint them that color. Just, it doesn't, doesn't work that way. And I'm like, yes, you could, if you wanted to, you, you actually could. And it would be, it would generate PR for you and, you know, do that. And they wouldn't do it. Um, so then I bought an orange Fiesta hatch, you know. We all have our colors. The, the four cars I bought from Bo, dark blue, light blue, orange, red. I all bought, all I bought, colors. Yeah, I bought the Fiesta from Bo. Yeah, I so. I, I can't. I recommend Galpin. I think. I mean, I, you know, yep. is, there's no. no such thing as as a as a perfect dealership, but that's a dealership that gives a fuck about enthusiasts, and so I I represent yeah. them when I can. And they have a killer little diner, so you mm -hmm. can get like a good breakfast while we, you wait for your. We were talking time. about the horseless carriage. They're delivering on Uber Eats right now oh, during no the lockdown. Shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We talked about the horseless carriage. So, Their steak fries rule. Yeah. Oh, it's great. <laughs> so you know, you know Jeff Charon, the the crazy Porsche collector who has yeah. that perfect speedster. Yeah. So he his hangar where he keeps all his Porsches is in Van Nuys, where Galpin is. And so every time I hang out with him, we always eat there because it's like it's good. It's, it's an old eat. school yeah, diner. Good. You know how hard it is to get a Jersey style diner in Los Angeles. That's a Jersey style diner. It's perfect. I, I don't know what that means, but yeah, it is like it's a great. New Jersey style diner, like an old school diner like that has a, Greek, a menu a like diner? 74 fucking pages. It's run by Greeks. You could get yeah. anything yeah, yeah, yeah. from General Tao's chicken to an omelet <laughs> to a burger. Yeah, 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 yeah. A whole that, that's, a, that's a New York thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I just knew they were, I didn't know there was Jersey style. I knew that they were Greek diners. In Jer there's there they are ubiquitous. Uh, no, no, along my, my wife's from Philadelphia, Jersey. which is Jersey. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, Go and, across and, the Ben Frank Bridge. They're right there. They're no, right. and you're right. You can, you can totally get like egg rolls and and uh, and uh, mozzarella sticks. Like, why not? They're yeah. cooked in the same tray. Yeah, <laughs> like, they share the fryer grease. It's perfect. Yeah. What else we got, Zach? Um, seeing as you have both driven hundreds of modified cars, what are some common themes that you've noticed among well-modified cars? What are some of the most common mistakes people make? While well, Johnny's thinking, I'll dive right in. Most, <laughs> A lot of people make their cars too stiff. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people equate stiff and sporty, and so people just straight up make their cars too stiff. And some of the best cars I've ever driven, uh, set up by some of the smartest people I know uh, who have either won races or, or, or been very successful, the cars are not stiff. If you drive a Dynan BMW, that's softer than the factory M cars. If you drive drive a BBI Porsche, it's softer than the stock car. Uh, a lot of people who go racing have learned that the suspension needs to travel. Yeah. And then a lot of people who just buy a set of coilovers or whatever and decide that stiff equals sporty, fucking crank it up, bro. And you end up with a car that's bouncy and shitty and takes hops when there's a bump in the road. And well, it's something not good. Steve Dynan said to us is all it's all about putting the tire on the ground as mm. long as possible mm -hmm. and traction. So if your car, like you said, I, is too stiff, it skips over bumps, you are losing traction. I was just going to make that point. Like it, when, you, when the car's too stiff, the tires aren't on the road and you have, you know, it's, it's like everyone says like, Oh, you know, like I need all wheel drive because this, and I'm like, you know, the second you come off the gas, your car is no longer all wheel drive. The second you touch <laughs> the brakes, it's not all wheel drive. It's just, it's all about tire patch. Yeah. Um, I would say that it's sexier to upgrade the engine than it is to upgrade the tires and the brakes. And, um, like, 
a lot of power is good, I guess, for drag racing, but like tires, just 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 buy the best tires. I don't that'll like I'll give you a for instance. Yes, uh, and they're not really modified; they're factory mods. But I I had the the Subaru the S two hundred nine right. That's the sixty five thousand dollar super Subaru sixty five thousand dollar, and I had the series white uh, STI. So the series white is forty four grand, and it comes on uh, Pilot Sport Cup twos, and the S two hundred nine comes on uh, Dunlop like the, the GTR tires, like the 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 six hundred whatever blah blah blah. Series white's better, less power, doesn't have crazy arrow, doesn't have a carbon fiber roof or wing. Uh, series white's better because of the tires, and um, people overlook that, and they'll just get some weird bullshit Chinese tire because it's cheap and um, it's like it, you know you really rarely need more I, I tune my car but it, it's you, you you want tire 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 and then brakes and then probably leave your suspension alone because the guys with the master's degrees in suspension that built it they probably know what they're doing and then you can add a little bit more power there you go yeah that's my rant. But no, tire, 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 tire. tires, tires, tires. It's, yeah. it's the tire. first mod. It's the last mod people think about, but it is the most important mod. It's the first mod. one you should do. Yeah, it's, it's acceleration, not, it's braking, sexy. cornering. It handles. It 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 improves yeah. all of them. Yeah, and 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 the other thing I'll say is, and and this and the guy's question kind of excluded this, but in case people missed it, because he said well modified. If you spend time on internet forums, the amount of bullshit you will see to gain five horsepower <laughs> by removing the fireproofing material from the hood oh, so or true. like cutting this exhaust pipe or whatever. Like, don't do that. That's bad. That's, <laughs> that's bad. You won't notice five horsepower. You won't feel yeah. it. Your lap time won't show it. Any, and yeah. well, if you're doing those things, you're not probably not going to the track anyway. Yeah, but just, yeah. 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 If, it, if it's free, it doesn't work. Also, just last two words, professional alignment. Mm, yeah. You know what I mean? There's cars where you might you might not even know that your alignment from the factory is, is terrible. And, and like we, I, I, was it, Johnny, was it Randy who discovered that there was three seconds in a C8 Corvette with an alignment at Willow Springs? Was that correct? No, I don't know if it was Randy, but I mean, it, it might have been because he's, he's, Randy's amazing because I've seen him say like, you know, to like the the guys that built a Corvette. I'm thinking of the C7 specifically, but he's like, change the rear bar. If you if you put three degrees on the rear bar, it'll do this. And they're like, no, 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 we're the experts. We built the car, and um, they then they do what Randy says and like, oh shit, it's three seconds a lap faster. Yeah. He did that with the the Z06 uh, at, at Big Willow, and and GM actually went to Big Willow, spent two weeks there, did not publicize it, but two weeks, and they came up with like a bumpy track setting mm. and they gained three seconds well i i think what i read and i believe this is correct i don't i don't want to say yeah, this it, wrong it could, it could be it well could what be. We I'm, just, I'm totally out of it when i so drove c8 knows. for road and track p cody last year it car was a 19. little yes car 19 it was a little pushy right uh, and and but what bozy discovered was that there were significant factory alignment settings available right you could do a lot of adjusting with the factory setup somebody and i fucking thought it was you guys at motor it, trend it, it could have been it could have been I, 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 maybe you, you know, weren't involved but i think it was randy and 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 somebody at motor trend they went to willow springs they did the alignment that you could do with the factory settings and it was worth three seconds at big willow i yeah. believe this is true and yeah. that backs up what Bozy said about the alignment. Yeah. And it backs up with what Roden Track said about the fact that the car comes conservative and you could make it more aggressive if you want. There's also yeah, some car. Sorry, go ahead, Johnny. No, 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 no. Please, Zach, go ahead. Well, there's also some cars we've driven that or uh, have read stories about that have been shipped um, in ways where the alignment was compromised. Alpha so they, 4Cs, we yeah, hear like about that. They have yeah. arrived in dealership where and they the weren't boat, fixed. Um, they get strapped down on the boat and that fucks up the yeah. alignment somehow. And it shouldn't It shouldn't be common. I don't know how common it is, but it's just like, it's something like tires. It's something that you can do that really changes the handling and how your car will feel it, and it, how it talks to you and it's less expensive than tires. I, You know, if you, if you spend enough time talking to PR people, th their weakest link sometimes are the prep companies because they will put cars out that are fucked up. Yeah. Um, we, we, and, and this wasn't actually a prep company thing, but we had uh, a couple years ago at a best driver's car, we had a GT4 flown out from Germany 
and it was the first one in the U.S. And so no one here knew what the proper setting was. And the thing understeered like 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 crazy. And we're like, yeah, the GT4 understeers. And then, you know, it went back to Atlanta and got fixed. And then we got another one. And it's like, oh, yeah, the one that was strapped down to the airplane. <laughs> and fucking pulled this bar here and that bar here. And it was understeering. But really, it's a very neutral car. You know, so yeah, these are these are things that need going over, you know, before you do real testing uh, or real and, track and work. Yeah. You know, I think for a lot of people, alignment's always like a scam that like Jiffy Lube tries to pull on you. Like you're like, I just want new tires. And they're like, yeah, well, you know, your backup light is burned out because they they swapped it when you weren't looking and you need an alignment. But it actually is super important. I think a lot do of you, people uh, dismiss it, but. If you're in L.A., shout out to West End Alignment, which is a place that is sort of a secret here in Los Angeles. They have a pretty long waiting list to get in, but they're Ooh, like geniuses okay. yeah. with, oh, really? uh, with alignments. And they're not yeah, expensive. Yeah. They're like, yeah, they're reasonable. like we're an alignment shop. Yeah. But I think what, you know, people that don't live in L.A., obviously, what you can do is find a performance shop that it has a good reputation in your area and then you what they should do is they should ask you what you're going to do with the car so they'll say do you track it do you drive it on the street only like what are you looking for and they can dial in the number of degrees in all the various settings that will optimize the car for what you're doing with it and that's what you want to look for in yeah. an alignment shop because an aggressive alignment that might give you three seconds of big willow it might also make a car like the corvette tram line like crazy on the 405 yeah. i don't know i or, haven't driven or, it but but that's yeah. that's that's the other end of that spectrum you know or you know if you do like you know this to the to the the toe or whatever you might go a thousand miles on a set of tires dude <laughs> that's the other thing. that too my, yeah it might just lunch tires my girlfriend's yeah. ex texted me they broke it up weird and i'm dating her now and uh and he's just like hey man i'm thinking of getting new tires what should i get and i'm like didn't you get new tires six months ago he's like yeah he has a lifted tacoma like a pre-runner tacoma he's uh -huh. like he's like yeah i don't know what's going on man this thing just eats tires so i'm looking at new tires and i was like get in alignment dude like this was six months yeah, you yeah. ate tires in the front he went and got alignment and he was like Wow. <laughs> the car doesn't turn wow. itself anymore. Six degrees on the right. Dude, it was just, remember remember the Cherokee on all cars yeah. that was trying to turn the whole time? Like, it was because the all the bolts were gone on the wheel and it was trying to drive itself away from the car. I had I had that long-term, uh, that Cadillac CTSV wagon, and I remember we were, I mean, we were, you know, I mean, we were fucking murdering that poor car. But, yeah. like, we were going through a lot of rear tires, <laughs> and, mm. uh, we got it aligned and it was like, yeah, it was like 2.8 degrees out on like one of the rear tires, which is a lot. Yeah. You know? It's it's one of those things where you're, you, it can really affect how your car drives. I mean, it really can. Yeah. yeah. What yeah, else yeah, we got, yeah, Zach? Yeah. We got, let's power through a couple of these, Johnny, because we got Try a it. fucking list, bro. All right. Let's do it. Um, let's do it. What, what? I got nothing to do. I know. You know? I know. All right. In your, in your opinion, excluding performance versions like GTIs, STIs, who makes the best driving, quote, normal or, quote, appliance car like Honda, Mazda, VW? Tesla. Mazda. Mazda. Oh, Tesla. You said Tesla? I said Tesla. Is that an appliance car? It's so a expensive. A Model 3 though. is an appliance car. It's not. If it's right. not, if it's not all no, but no. I, I feel this like it's a nice a appliance point. car. It's but I nice think it's a nice car. appliance car. That's a good point. I, I, and if people drove, call me a I Tesla a hater, but I'm not a Tesla hater. I'm an Elon Musk bullshit caller outer. That's different from being a Tesla hater. I like I, the model. I, three. A good point. I don't. I don't even pay attention to any of that. But I will say, I drove a forty-one thousand dollar Model Three. Okay. And it was phenomenal. Really? Was like that? That makes me happy because the one I drove was like sixty-six grand. Yeah, so so it was it was last year at Car of the Year. We had a forty one thousand dollar Model Three. We had a forty five thousand dollar Hyundai Ionic electric car, mm -hmm. and a forty seven thousand dollar Nissan Leaf. And it's you could like, get a Nissan Leaf up to forty seven thousand dollars. I think I think that's what they cost. Oh my god! Get the fuck out of here. Listen, I don't know anything about it. Hey, listen, I don't. I just work here, right? I will say that we were just collectively as a group of like you know. 20 adults laughing at the fact that the Tesla was 41. Like you'd have to be, you'd have to work for Hyundai or Nissan to buy either of the other two. Like, wow. It, How you know, interesting. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't realize that it was, it was tremendous. It was tremendous. In and, fairness, um, the base price of the leaf. Wow. It's a high thirties though. That's still base really, is, base, is oh, base is 31. Um, but if, if you, you look at, if you look at the model, the SL model, plus plus. Yeah, S no, well, I think, 
I, but if you look at the Model 3, the base is like 37. Yeah, it's like almost impossible to buy that. <laughs> it is. But <laughs> yeah. we had a $41,000 one. And okay. We, and we also had a $65,000 one. And the, um, and the Model Three isn't atrocious looking. I mean, this is no, but oh, okay, yeah, wait. But, so you had a you had a, you had a, a base, and then you had a loaded up Model Three. We had a performance plus whatever they did. Call you it. and and the forty one thousand dollar one was dope. Yeah, so it was it was it was almost as good. Yes, the performance one did handle a little better, but not like drastically better. And it was like I, it was just you know like you can get an Accord. I maybe close to 41. You know, I don't know. It was just like, wow, you get a lot for the money. But I would say to, to answer this question, Mazda goes out of their way because of Dave Coleman. Uh, they go out of their way to make all their cars pretty sporty. Whenever like it's, I it's, travel, yeah, I just do my best to rent CX fives. Yeah. I really yeah. like CX fives a lot as rental cars. They're really, yeah, they're great. And really Mazda, nice. The new Mazda three, while it's kind of, odd looking it, it, it's I agree. tremendous to drive you know i think across their entire like model range they do the best job of making all the cars kind of fun to drive you know yeah and that's why they're like less than one percent of the market because right. <laughs> don't give a fuck no, no, one, no cares. one cares but Ma mazda does a great job uh but, but i mean like you could say porsche does a great job um that's about it yeah all right. that's cool. maybe honda some i don't know no you know, I had a, I had a, I had a regular Civic as a press car when the new generation Civic came out, and I was shocked at how nice it was. It was the, really, really the, nice. The, the regular Civic, the regular Accord, kick ass, the CRV. But then you have like the Pilot, which is like, I mean, to be fair, I haven't driven a Pilot in about four years, but man, that was like a, a letdown. And then the the HRV is, yeah. But yeah, but Honda, Honda used to be. It used to be you would say, you know, Honda, Mazda, and then BMW and Porsche, and then like. Honda and BMW sort of mm -hmm. fell yeah. out of the picture. Yeah, yeah. You know, although some BMWs are great, but they like, I just yeah. that, that for the most part, BMWs lost me. I think they're they're, you they're yeah. regular the cars. Twenty eight Grand Coupe. Yeah. Oh, the, I I hate the Grand the, Coupes. The front drive thing. Mm. It it has. I haven't more... had a go, but I'm not gonna go to, uh, to even attempt to have a go. I don't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> It, it has it has more um, like throttle off oversteer than like a nine thirty. Really, it, it's fucking mad. Like I was like, oh these these tires are terrible, and they're terrible because it's like Bridgestone Taranza or Taranza uh -huh. or something. Yeah, Taranza. But, yeah, Taranza. Yeah. yeah. But like, but that that's that. Okay, no, that's the that's the M two Grand Coupe or something. I'm talking about the two twenty eight I. Like, wait, the, there's the, an M two Grand Coupe. I think also? so. Also, I think there is. There's there's a 228, an M235, and then an M2 Grand Coupe. But the the 228i, the bottom rung front wheel drive with an all wheel drive system. Um, the you should get it just to experience the fucking lift off oversteer. Like you come off the throttle and are going to the brake pedal, and it's like full <laughs> full rotation towards the apex. I mean that it's can be fun. Cool. That's kind of fun actually. It, it's it, like it, kind of good. It, it's funny cuz we just did a, a test with it and so I'm like, "Oh, that's what it's doing." And then my, the other guy who you know, he's not he's not a performance driver. He's one of our like mainstream car guys. He's like, "The car's fishtailing everywhere." And I'm like, <laughs> "Really? That's called trailing throttle oversteer." He's like, "No, it's fishtailing." <laughs> Is that a Pull that picture so, up, Zach. Let me tell you something, Johnny. If you took a saw and you cut right down the front and rear axle lines of this car, you would have a 2010 to 2017 Ford Focus in the middle. It, it, you know what's funny? <laughs> if you if you were to say, put this next to like a Subaru Impreza, it's the same. The C pillar is the same because. People forget. So remember, the, you know, the Hoffmeister kink on a BMW? Yep. The reason it does that little kick, this car doesn't have it, but the reason it did that little kick forward or backwards was to point at the rear wheel because BMWs were rear wheel drive. That mm -hmm. was that was actually why Hoffmeister Hoff really? designed Yeah, that's why no he designed shit. it that way. And, and so when you lose that and all you have is the grill, there's no visual indicator on the entire car that it's a BMW. Yeah. Because it's, it's a mini. Well, I think, like, I think that removing the Hoffmeister kink from the two series, that, if you put that back, I'm not going to look at this car and go, 
great looking car. Definitely BMW. Like it has so much going on. Yeah, there's like some it, Hyundai it, in it. There's some. I mean, I mean it's, it's, like it's, there's just you know, a lot. There's something physical that happens when you make a car front wheel drive, and 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 one of those things is the engine goes forward, and the and everyone makes fun of me for saying this, but the dash to axle ratio shrinks. Yeah, so if you pull that picture back up, you can see the front door, the cut for the front door is basically touching the front wheel, and that's that's what happens. Um, that's, so that's what you want to look for is that the distance point. between the front yeah. door cut and the front wheel arch. Yeah. That's the distance yeah. and, there. And, and again, like, uh, you, you know, some people think the Honda Accord is beautiful. Fine. But if you look at the dash to axle, that little piece of metal on the, the trailing edge of the, the front fender, it's that big. You know if who does it best? At- Volvo. Volvo, yeah, Volvo makes that Volvo piece artificially big. They fake it to make it yeah. look like a rear drive car in the V90. So but they make at, a bigger look, piece there. Look at the look at the the Kia Stinger, if, uh, Zach. If you if you will pull up a Kia Stinger, like it's. Hold know, on, I sent I sent him. He's busy. I sent him down down a, down, a, down a hall. He's he's his fingers are moving very fast. So As oh yeah, could. so look, that's a good picture. Look, you got it's a it's like a foot. Yeah. It's like a foot yeah. from the from the yeah. arch to the door. Yeah. Versus Even if you white, go back to the. To the other car, uh, the the two series, it's like four inches. I agree, yeah. but like there are other front. I mean, this is just now. It's just subjective. Like there are other things about this car, and like it's that also I hate. ugly. And there are, yeah, because there there are front wheel drive cars that I like the look of, and, and and I know. But Johnny, you do make a good point that I think I forget sometimes, and other people forget too, is that the, you know the hard points argument, not argument, but like the reality of if you're gonna package a car with a certain yeah. drivetrain and a certain layout and all, all those things, you can only move so many things. And I do. I try to remind myself that designers, you know, they go they go into that job with all the dreams and aspirations that, you know, one can can have when you go into a creative field and then you're probably given a lot of rules and and kind of boxes and lanes you have to walk in creatively because oh, you can I, only do so much uh, so, within the the parameters. So so here's here's what no one gets about making cars. 60% 60% of the cost of a vehicle is from the firewall to the uh, middle of uh, to the to the front axle. So from the firewall to the front axle, engineering Whoa. that 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 like 15% of the car. That's 60% of the cost of engineering a car. The guys that make the wrapper, in other words, the designers. Um, wow. You know th- that that's like five percent. Wait, why? You know I mean? Why is that? I mean, why is that foot? So is it because that's where all that's, packaging that's, difficulties are? Yeah, that's that's engine. That's how the engine fits. That's transmission. That's steering column. That's um, uh, a crash. Uh, it's just, it's just multimedia it's HVAC. It's like yeah, all that stuff. It, that's it's just engineering that. So that's when when Volkswagen went to the the uh, M. Uh, oh God, MQB. MQB. Yeah, QB. You know, it's like. Every time they make a new car off MQB and there's like, you know, 50 cars off that platform, they save 60% because it's already engineered. Yeah. And that's why everyone's moving to that model. That's why Porsche uh, or, you know, Audi, Porsche designed it, but Audi, Porsche, Volkswagen, the um, the uh, M, MLB Evo 2, which is Audi A4 up to Lamborghini Urus, is just the, the cost is fixed. That that's it's that same uh, dash to axle mm-hmm. uh, dash dash to axle uh, ratio, um, and that's all. It's all a fixed cost, so they can they can just pop cars out, right? And it's it's you know, that that's that's all it is. So with that two series um, or the two series Grand Coupe, it's a mini. So right, they, so they design a mini, and then you make a sedan version of it. You put a BMW badge on it, but if you look at the hard points where the transmission, where the engine goes through the firewall, blah, 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 or the, you know, the top shaft goes to the firewall. It's the same. And it's, it's front wheel drive proportions. Yeah. Got it. Perfect. Yeah. On, on the design, uh, related to design, um, someone asked what we think of the Mark A GTI going to thinner headlights. <laughs> you know what that is? That's is that just pedestrian? Crash. It's that, crash, or crash or pedestrian? Yeah, that's all it is. It's just yeah. pedestrian. Um, that's why, you know, it's funny. BMW went to the giant grill that everyone hates. It's just pedestrian. There's mm-hmm. no, there's, there's no reason to do that other than 
it's it's just for pedestrian safety. It's just European laws. Got it, Zach. We got what else we got? Many. I'm trying to we read as fast as I can. Uh, you just you know what? I'm gonna be fucking totally cynical. Let's just sort by dollar amount. Let's just keep it real easy. They color that. I want some of these dollars. Just kidding. I'm drunk. I've been wanting to say that for two years. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> you can have. You can start a podcast and get some of these okay. dollars. It's not um, that many dollars, to be honest with you. It's pretty minimal dollars. <laughs> uh, Johnny, um, Renew Auto says he met you briefly when you stopped for gas in St. George, Utah. Uh, what is the most fun or memorable assignment you've ever been on as a journalist? Oh, my God. Here's the thing, and, and Matt can, can attest to this. It's an embarrassment of riches. You know what I mean? It's like if if you ask like a billionaire, what's the like you know the the best million dollars they ever made? They're all kind of fun. What's the favorite um, person you've killed? <laughs> yeah, I mean the the first thing that popped into my head was uh, years nine years ago. Um, I did uh, a, a Bentley trip through Scotland, and, and we had a convertible, a GTC, and a and a, a regular. GT. I, think, GT. I can't remember if it was a V8 or a W12, honestly, and I feel bad about that. But that was, like, first of all, Scotland, if Italy is the best country in the world, Scotland's the most beautiful country in the world when, when you get north of, like, Edinburgh. Um, it's it's stunning how, like, I remember being in Kauai for my friend's 50th birthday, and everyone's like, oh, because, you know, it's the Garden Island of Hawaii. It has the most rainfall of any place on Earth, so it's lush. And everyone's going, oh, Kauai is the most beautiful place in the world. And I'm like, no, Scotland. Scotland's the most beautiful. And I spent the night in the Macallan Distillery. In the, If you look, if you have a bottle of Macallan, pull it up, Zach, please. If you have a bottle of Macallan, there's a house on the label. It's called the Easter Elkies House. And, and as they pointed out to me, it was built in 1700, and America was founded in 1776. And they I like to the remind you of house. that when you go to the old country. <laughs> they like to remind yeah. you that, that their house is like older than your entire yeah. country. Oh, I got a little friend here. Richard wants to say. Oh, hi, hi Richard. Yeah. So if you look at the, if you look at the thing, the top left, the topmost leftmost window, that was the room I stayed in. Nice. And before I like blind drunk passed out, we drank. Besides everything else we drank, we drank two bottles of 30-year-old Macallan. Whoa. Yeah, that seems like a good time. That seems like it was, a pretty good time. It was, That's a and good then we time. went to Loch Ness, and I fell in Loch Ness. But, like, I also remember driving. I drove a G65 from Copenhagen to the Arctic Circle with Justin Bell as my passenger and That's co-driver. That's fun. That's a good that one. Was, that was – and 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 we went <laughs> – I, I shouldn't say this with my son on my lap, but we went to Mercedes Benz Fashion Week in Stockholm, and um, the Swedish Mercedes people like got the message that Justin and I are major American celebrities. <laughs> <laughs> so they threw me and Justin in the crow's nest of the bar with like um, fourteen Swedish models that mm-ts, were participating mm-ts, in Fashion mm-ts, Week. Mm-ts. Dude, it was yeah, it was ridiculous. Do you know this man? Yeah. Do you, yeah, do you host yeah. a cooking show? Do you also, <laughs> do you also There's a lady have money? named Nike. If she's listening, uh, her name was Nike doing? because That's, she's fast and comfortable. It's very presumptuous. <laughs> what if that? What if Nike grows up to be not athletic and not hot? That's a real problem. Well, Nike means victory in Greece, as I'm sure you know. And mm. and when uh, what's his face ran from Marathon to Athens, 26.2 miles, he yelled out victory and then collapsed and died. And and the the Greek word is Nike. Oh. I'm sure you all know that. I'm re- I, I mean obviously, absolutely. Yeah, obviously. But yeah. I'm glad yeah. you explained for the audience. That's I don't know good. why I'm just being. Oh, best, just what being... was the point of this? Oh, the best trip. Range best Ro- trip. Listen, here's one for you, real easy. In 2013, when Range Rover was launching the what is now the current generation full size Range Rover, oh, they nice rented car. out Amanjiri, all of it. They rented the whole place. That is. Because I stayed there with Hannah on a vacation. I know what one room costs. That is the most baller shit I've ever heard of in my entire life. Renting out all of Amanjiri. I can't even... A-M-A-N-G-I-R-I. What? Oh, I was saying not the best press trip. A wonderful press trip. Not the best, but wonderful. For the launch of of the 7th Gen Phantom Point Two. So there's a new Rolls Royce Phantom. There was the one before that. This is Gen 8. The one before that was Gen 7. But the um, the the refresh uh-huh. 
was there's a place That's the near shot. Monaco. I can't remember the name of the hotel. Zach's but got like, the picture up of, of Amon Jerry, which Range Rover fucking rented out, and it's the most gangster shit that exists anywhere in the world. Well, but wait, Monaco, be, outside Monaco? This might be slightly more gangster. So basically, when the palace overflowed in Monaco, uh, Princess Grace would send people like John Lennon or Marlena Dietrich. She'd send them to this hotel, mm. and they rented every room, and it yeah. was like... <laughs> My three-year-old's making noise. It was just the craziest hotel I've ever been to. Like it was, it was an atoll that stuck out into the Mediterranean. So you had like a 270-degree view of like there's Monaco, there's Nice. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, my my kid is no. He's backing Lego up time. what you're saying. You're like this place is amazing. He's like that's right. He's yeah. Well, he's, he's got. I'll just. He's got one of my giant Lego tires. Um, Just tell him to go tear a phone book in half or something. Yeah. All right, Zach, let's go lightning round for five minutes and okay. end this show. Uh, who should or will buy Aston Martin and why? <laughs> Did you hear Aston Martin is valued at like 60 pence a share? <laughs> no, Fuck. is it really? I don't know what a pence is, but I bet that's like 85 cents a share. That's yeah, it's not uh, good. Is that actually true? I don't know that for sure. Uh, yeah, I saw. I read I read it yesterday. It, was, it opened at like 26 British pounds uh -huh. and it's like 60 pence. Oh, did, did they take it public or that just happened yeah. because of coronavirus? They took no, it public. They took it public like oh, shit. two years ago. Uh, and yeah, it's they're in dire straits. Man, if they, I was gonna like launch it. Like, if they put that on the U.S. stock exchange, people would just buy it like crazy because even though it's a terrible company, that wonderful company, but their financials are always up and down. It wouldn't really They've matter. They've gone bankrupt seven times That's in the I'm last right. hundred and five Thank years. Thank you. You're my, yeah, far more They're concise due. and eloquent than me. My, uh, when my dad was working for Ralph Lauren, Ralph wanted to buy Aston Martin before. Tell him now's the time. Like <laughs> I read, I think it was probably 2011 or 12, I read Aston Martin's business plan, which got delivered to my house in a leather-bound gilded book like it was like a wedding album or something. It was yeah, yeah, very yeah. strange. Step two, question mark. Step three, profit. <laughs> it, had the, it had what is now the, the DBS in it as the, in oh. the business plan. Yeah. I mean, look, here, here's Aston's problem. You've driven the DBS Super Legera? I have, yes. Okay, fucking brilliant. Like, I love that car to pieces. But your most expensive car ought not be your best car. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and if they could just make every car, I don't know if that's actually their problem, but in my mind, if you can make every car as good as that car, then you'd have a great company. But it seems like they did for a while. Like, when the Vantage was good, and the DBS was good, and the Vanquish was good, like... All the yeah. cars were gorgeous, good, yeah. fun, yeah. everything. Yeah. And they had now, a good run. Like the the Vantage, I, I mean, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but it, it hasn't grabbed people. Like it's very clear it hasn't grabbed people, and there and there's just the number of success stories they have in their in their showrooms just seems yeah. to have gone down. I've seen one customer owned Vantage on the street since it's been out. Have there you, you go. Have you driven there it? There you go. I did. Yeah, I drove one, and I I had a lot of things to say about it, and they were a little upset about that, and they sent me another one. <laughs> I drove uh. a second one, and the second one was a little better. Uh, the suspension calibration was better. I think the handling, but but like we were talking about before, the GTC exists. Yeah. Which I think is no, a prettier overall car. The, well, my biggest power. problem with it is car, to pair power. that Mercedes engine with a ZF8 speed instead of the dual clutch that Mercedes uses is a disservice to that engine. Probably intentional. I yeah. Mean, you know. But it's like, it's just one of those weird things where like you that ZF8 speed, like Audi uses that for the S8, right? That's that's the best automatic transmission tuning I've ever experienced. Like it's fucking nuts. But Aston doesn't know how to program it. Like right. BMW uses it for the new M5. Like terrific. And and yeah, so they who, got who, it. What car did we just had that you, that had it that was programmed? Oh, the fucking Levante. Levante. The Levante Trofeo. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Levante yeah, yeah. Trofeo had great ZF it programming. Did. It did. It really it did. It was way quicker than the Vantage I drove. Yeah. 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 And and know. so 
I remember so a couple of, and, and and again I really like Aston Martin like I just they're they're gore- like before I was doing this professionally if you said what's your favorite brand I would say Aston Martin because yeah. the cars were just so stunningly gorgeous and and muscular like you know like the double supercharged <laughs> like the, the two V6 superchargers advantage. this is a good like, idea you know <laughs> Um, I still think, like, if I won the lottery, I would buy a DBS and then drive it around to buy other cars because it's just like I think they're you know that I just saw a DB9 on Sunday and just like they're so, they're just great. A lot of Vans V12 running around. Twenty seven thousand dollars. You should just buy one. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was like like we had that we had the DBS Superleggera at Best Drivers Car last year and like it wasn't the best drivers car, but if it's like okay, you're done, take a car and go home. Yeah. I take the D- the DBS because mm-hmm. like it's a seventeen seven hundred and fifteen horsepower fucking leather wrapped rocket ship. But, like, and I love awesome. but I love the last gen too, man. Like yeah, who was that? That was the uh, that was Vanquish. No, no, no but Van- the Vanquish, yeah. And then the, the DBS, last, yeah. Vanquish became DBS when they put turbos on it. Vanquish I like became DBS. Pre-turbo. DBS became Vanquish. Now it's the DBS. Yeah, yeah. yeah it went back and forth a few times. Yeah. Wait, that this wasn't one. a lightning round, though. It Zach, was. That was because because we, keep, we keep wandering because we, these are good questions and we uh, we got shit Fuck. to say. 35%. 35%. Let's go. All Fuck. Right. All right. Speaking um, if there was a manufacturer you could spend a month inside of, what would it, who would it be? Acura. Okay. Matt, what's your answer? A month inside of? A, like, month, uh, a month embedded with. Um, I'm going to say Koenigsegg for me. Ooh, Koenigsegg. That's very interesting. Um, no way. Are we are we embedded to to learn or to help? Well, help question. they wouldn't. I mean, I don't think any of us are a great help to any of them. But uh, I don't could, know. Just oh, I'd say, be, I'd be a huge they say inside of. If you could embed me in Bowling Green as their final inspector, hmm. that Ooh. would be great. something I would love to fucking do. Great. So that's helping. Okay. So so to help, I'd like to help Acura because I took my driver's license test. In a in an Integra, an '86 Integra, and like Good I car. want accurate, I want accurate to kick ass again. Um, but to learn, I would I uh, uh, Porsche the uh, go hang out with Andy at Porsche GT in Flax. And they and, and they watch. do yeah yeah they do great work. They would just throw me out. Um, <laughs> yeah yeah because they'd be like uh, 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 Clapman. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, there's that reason, but there's also just like... I'm kidding, I, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I would just go, yeah, no, I did that thing you asked me to do, but I did it halfway. I just think it's good enough. And they go, and you're out. And <laughs> that's why. That's right. why you're out. Um, what is a car-related thing to do in Japan and a non-car-related thing to do in Japan? Car-related. Fun2drive.com. It's the number two. Fun2drive. Rent yourself an R34 GTR or a Hakoska Skyline or a, a 240 or an early Evo. They have they have all the iconic Japanese um, uh, sports cars from history. The last 30 years, they're out in the mountains on the Toge roads. You exit Tokyo and you go get one and you drive it. That's what I. That's one. That's a car related okay. thing. Yanni. Uh- Car related, I would go and find the 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 baller hotels in the in the baller districts and look for the uh, Yakuza license plates. Yes. So like, oh. if you see one, that's fucking Marlon Brando of Japan. If like the lower one, the number, it's oh, it's, it's like more Dubai. Baller. Yeah. Oh, so shit. well, it's 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 a little different though. It's like it's like if you like one is super gangster, two is is not gangster, one one is gangster. One 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 is Yakuza gangster, but um, if you can get a one, like I I saw a one, and uh, like if I would have taken a picture of a car, they would have beheaded me. But I saw um, I saw a six seventy five LT with a one one plate, and that was like gangster. The only real Yakuza I saw was in Japan was a actual three hundred SL Gullwing with black tints, fully black tints white walled wheels in front of a club <laughs> that me and Thaddeus tried to get in at four o'clock in the morning and they tried to sell us eighty dollar sleeves to cover our arm tattoos to get in. They said we had to buy right. the sleeves to get in and we right. we right. left. But they there was a three hundred SL Gullwing black, black tints, white walled wheels parked That's out front. Gangster. Yeah, we, it was extremely the, the- we saw they had a, um, it was a Toyota, um, oh, what are they called? God, um, tip of my tongue, Art Fion's, uh 
ah, it's killing me. The van, the four passenger, like giant minivan. Oh yeah. Had, like had the space one, van. Uh, it's, it's art, art fion. Oh my God. It's, it's a tip of my tongue. Ar, ar, ar. Anyways, it had a one, one plate and it was that, that's like, you're, you're, you're a gangster. We have to go attend a meeting with the government <laughs> minister to yeah. like figure out salt production for the next 12 months. That's, that's and, you, and you're a gangster yeah. when you roll in a van, you because you, you've gone through your phases of Mercedes and, and showy stuff, and now you're like, oh yeah, yeah. no, 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 comfort oh. is most important. <laughs> the, the the four passenger, it's, so it's like you know, our, a minivan in America seats eight. The same minivan in Japan can be configured to seat four, and it has a mm. sixty inch flat screen with right. like yeah, it's like one of them shits you see in the seats. Dupont Registry, the conversion vans yeah. where, they, where they private jet what, the um, interior. Yeah. Kevin, like Hart, Sonny, Kevin Hart rolls in. Shit. Yeah, he yeah. Fly, it's, it's yeah. called the Alfard. Yeah. Alfard. Alfard. That's correct. Alfard. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, fuck, Lightning uh, round. Alfard with one one plates. And yeah. wrangle. Uh, yeah. Quick, quick answer. Daily driver. Twenty fourteen S class or twenty fourteen M five. S class. S class M five. S class. S class. Yeah. Um, how big would the disappointment be of a five point four twenty ten Raptor over the six two? Substantial. Yeah, a significant. It would be significant. Just get the six two. The di- price difference can't be that much. Yeah, although it it, it look it depends if you're gonna jump the thing. Um, having jumped a lot of those, the five four does jump better because it's lighter. <laughs> um, but if most people don't actually jump their cars, so get the six two. Okay, um, how shitty is the C four Corvette chassis? This guy loves shitty. uh loves yeah. them. He was shitty. thinking of getting one and making it a track toy, or should he just do a ninety two LS no, swapped R seven? N- neither of those. It, neither of those. What you should do if you're if you're if that's where your head's at and you want a track toy, you get a two thousand and one or two thousand and two Camaro. SS, the end of the F body. Very aerodynamic, very fast, medium shit build quality, but you will achieve that goal that you're probably going for there uh, much quicker. I would say if you get a, a C4 ZR1, mm. which different which, you story. Know, it's it's 25,000 bucks, but they're bulletproof and they're awesome. Or just get a C5 Z06. Yeah, which mm-hmm. they Great have car. to be like what eleven thousand now? Amazing yeah, they're like cars. the tops fifteen Gs. Yeah, Amazing. And, it, and it and it's it's four hundred horsepower and they're killer. Yeah, you yeah. smoke killer. fools, slicks, brakes, yeah. coilovers. Yeah. You smoke fools. Um, Mark Van Hoy just says shout out to his wife Ashley. She did her first manual brake stand uh, today, which in a driveway. Fucking that's awesome. That's very cute. That's really that's Ashley. that's rad. Very cute. Um, all right, Patrick Short says, "What's a fun daily driver in Canada for under forty-five grand?" Currently, he drives a two-door Jeep manual, but obviously tight when packed. Um, what, something what, so it needs to be able to handle deep snow. Deep so snow. 45, 45,000 Canadian is like twelve bucks in a Snickers bar. So well for now, but I feel like I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Deep snow. Nothing handles deep snow. All road. All road with winter tires. Won't handle deep anything. You need ground snow is ground just, clearing. I think I say so, just get a Jeep Cherokee. Grand Cherokee, nice car. Yeah, I was just a Jeep well. XJ Cherokee with with a lift and big tires. Yeah, a diesel engine possibly if you find it on the used market. Oh, in Canada maybe. Yeah, yeah. Delica. Um, just get a Delica. Delica will get you there eventually. <laughs> it'll but it'll fucking get you there. I love my Delica. Hannah had a choice. My wife had a choice today. I had to clear one car out of the garage. And I said, you get to, you can, for the next six days, you can drive the Delica or you can drive the uh, F type. And she went Delica. Nice. It's she's, friendly. She's, she's gangster. I get it. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's friendly. It's small. Uh, what's the best bottle of booze for under $30? $30? Under I don't 30 know. Tito's. Not, I mean, yeah. You're, you're getting a small bottle. Oh, you and, know, you can get some websites, maybe let's say KL Liquors, KL Wine, actually. I think you can get Elijah Craig for twenty nine ninety five. That's probably your best bet. Yeah, get a small Hendrix. Yeah, but like I would also say, like take that thirty dollars and sit on it this month. The next month, when you get another thirty dollars, sit on that and get Old Forester uh, nineteen twenty. There you go. Yeah, Zachary. Anything else? 
There's a lot of nice people that are donating things, but uh, and, uh, when we're, we're pressed for quick, time, you know. we're trying to go quick, and some of y'all's, some of y'all's is wordy as this fuck, is, uh, to be honest with you. Well, this is a fantasy game. Um, basically, build your own race team. So, oh boy. who would your team be? What would your car be? And what would your track be? What? Uh, Nürburgring, uh, 720S, and me, Matt, and like right. two guys that can really drive well. Perfect answer. Yeah. My right? ra- my race team would be uh, twenty four hours of of Daytona, uh, at Will Turner managing, Bill Oberlin <laughs> driving, yeah. uh, me taking sure. a, me taking a stint, but fundamentally retiring to lollipops uh, <laughs> eventually, yeah. which is yeah, it'd be like, me and Scott Dixon. You know, <laughs> I'm really taking more of a um, oh oh the joke is gone. God, Hesketh, that was the joke. It was a Hesketh racing. It was a James Hunt joke where we have lobster and champagne and shit at the racetrack. That was, but it This is a super easy one. Would you do a Coyote Swap Fox Body Project or a 15 to 20 Mustang GT? We know the answer. Oh, my God, dude. Just buy the car you can drive now. Buy the car The answer is always buy the car you can drive right now. That's the answer. Uh, Sean Keeley says, thanks for storing his Type R at uh, Westside Collector Car Storage in February. Sean, what's up, buddy? Oh, yeah. Congrats congrats on getting out of the Army. uh, Oh, is he out? Is he out? He's out. He's, like, out. He's, like, he's free. That He's dude free. came to do. Uh, he came to do like a tour of Los Angeles, and I hung on to his car for him. Good for you, cool. and yeah. thank you. Yeah. Yeah. He's um, a good dude. He's a really good dude. Uh, Cody Hooper says, Zach, do I have an interest in doing dirt one takes? Yes. Do you have cars and an area to do it in? Yeah. Um, pretty much yes. that's the answer. The smoking tire at gmail.com is yes. for all one take submissions for Zachary. Yeah. We are not with the wheel well anymore. Um. All right. I think that's covered it. There Actually, it I think is. we went back around the horn. It? Yeah. Johnny, it's always a pleasure, dude. Thank you for having uh thank you this for joining was, us. How many times did, did I flake on you for this one? Like seventy? No. No. I don't think I mean maybe Seven? one. It it was it's not it's not a flake. It wasn't a flake. Coronavirus fucks some shit up, dude. It's understandable. Yeah. We fucked some uh, shit up. We've managed to uh take advantage of the medium and, and find ways to get our friends on the show even though they can't be here and it's been it's been all right. It's been fine. It's not just it's get not a, the best, but it's okay. I, I get a lot of like background pressure, like do Ferris show again. Do Ferris show. Well, and, um, I mean, y- you you have almost an open fucking invite to do the show. No, I know. It's just, know. Uh, it's just I like I for for like a bunch of March, I was like, we can get people in studio still, and then and then I just sort of was like, all right, I guess we can't. So, I, you know, <laughs> I. <laughs> Yeah, I just can't do that yet. Hopefully, it'll you have, it up. You have like, kids, just, man. This is it, there's more important things than being in studio with us right now. You, oh, I agree. You'll, yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll but, but, come back in studio very soon, and it might be it might even be at the new studio. The new studio is so fucking sick, dude. Let's it's do the so new studio. Sick. I'm so Wait, hey, excited. Hey, point of, point of clarification: at your new studio, um, can you where can you smoke the cigars? Well, the cigar lounge is probably forty feet from the actual podcast studio. It's very close. Could I zoom in from the cigar lounge? <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll let you I'll let you smoke a cigar on the show if you want. I should have been smoking a cigar right now, but my kid's still. You're away, outdoors. So you really should. Well, it's my right. kid, you know, he's. I don't want the kid to like. What's daddy doing? You know, it's it's uh, just getting being, high. Being a parent, it's it's uh, it's ninety percent great and ten percent. You can't smoke cigars on the Smoking Tire podcast when the kid's still awake in your own backyard. You know what? It's it's okay. Life is still good. We're still charmed, Life's brother. Good. Uh, Life's plug plug anything. What do you want to plug? Uh, just you know, check out Motor Trend. I have a thing right now. Uh, yeah, there it is. The best WRXs and STIs I've ever driven. That's an article I wrote. Um, and uh, I've been driving them. Actually, it's 19 years, but we'll call it 20 for the for the deck there. Oh, it really yeah, has been 19 wow. years of WRX in America, hasn't yeah. it? Wow. Yeah. Man. Uh, oh, great. Look at Yeah, there you go. I, I go through them, and I, actually, I owned a 2006 wagon, and I loved it. And yeah. I go all the way through it. We, we can do the spoiler. Um, in a few months, no, you, gotta, you give have to come back on, Johnny, and I want to have an argument with you about the uh, the S two hundred nine. I can't do it right now, but 
Yeah, to- I'll argue about anything at any time. I know you I will. Do- I know. I can do both sides of the argument. <laughs> <laughs> Sam uh, Sam Smith, some of the best columns he writes are literally arguments with himself. It's amazing. He writes that shit, and then Travis goes, yeah, publish. Yeah, it's great. Publish. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> so that's why I like working yeah. where I work. Um, thanks for calling in, Johnny. I appreciate yeah, it, man, dude. Totally. Regards Thank to the wife and me. kid. Take care of all those press cars so I can keep them shiny side up. And of course, a cheers to you, brother. Thank you for I, yeah, coming cheers. in. I was going to say, I got just to piss you off, I got a DBS uh, Super Legera. What out? DBS Volante coming next week. Sick. After the turbo cab's done. That's going to be good. I'm going to get that turbo cab. You know it. Well, to piss Johnny off, we don't have kids. <laughs> <laughs> to piss Johnny off, I'm going to go home and I'm gonna go not home and listen to crying. Do whatever you want. Be- yeah. Before Take coronavirus, cats. I would be like, oh, you guys are like, you're, you're missing out. Now I'm like, you don't have kids? <laughs> <laughs> this is you awesome. Wanna, uh, do you want to adopt a fat, ugly one? <laughs> <laughs> get me the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> And on that note, the Smoking Tire Podcast is powered by Shout Engine. Get your own damn podcast at ShoutEngine.com. It's easy. All you need is a microphone, a connection to the internet, fucking Zoom and Skype now, and Mm -hmm. ideally something to say. And funny-ass friends. Thank you very much, folks. We will see you Friday at, what, 2 p.m. Pacific? Maybe four. It might be four. Friday afternoon, Pacific time. We got Frank Meekum of Meekum Auctions coming in to talk about two o'clock. Zach. Friday, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 Eastern. Frank Meekum will be talking about the state of the collector car market uh, on our show. Johnny, thanks, brother. We'll see you soon. Uh, good night, everybody. Bye.